And we're live! Good evening po sa inyong lahat na nandiyan ngayon sa Pilipinas. I hope you are still staying healthy and that you're all free from this pandemic that we are facing right now. And good morning po coming here from South Carolina, USA. I'm so glad to see all of you and I'm so glad that you have been very diligent in joining us in all our live streams. And I am also very happy to be looking at your... Uh, all of these uh, comments that you have here, for example, this one from um, Caroline Basilan, it says, or she says, Hi ma'am, good evening, first time ko po sa live chat, pero inuulit-ulit ko, playlist nyo, maliwanag at madali intindihin ang mga lesson, maraming salamat, and may God always bless your family. Thank you so much po, God bless din po sa inyo, ma'am Caroline Basilia, Basilan. Uh, this is another one from ma'am... Um, Wardalyn Malazarte. I learned so much from these videos than in my college days because in here it's well elaborated. I'm a newbie uh, and this is my email. Okay, so she has given us her email address. Thank you so much, Mom Wardalyn. And we are very happy, we're very glad that you can join us uh, this morning, this evening in the Philippines. Now, for those of you who have just tuned into our YouTube channel, we welcome all of you. We have been doing our live streams for several times already, and uh, I am very happy to see that our online classroom is growing. So we have more students now than when we had, um, than we started um maybe a few weeks back okay so we have just been doing this for just a few months so a little backgrounder for those who have just tuned in so to our new subscribers for those of you who still do not know me yet my name is mom mech saison manaa you can call me call uh, you can call me coach mech or mom mech i am from iloilo city i'm originally from iloilo city and um many of you have already known that we had our review center in iloilo city before the name of our review center was Study Link Review and Tutorial Center, and we have been doing this for several years already. I'm um, also a lab pastor, of course. Um, my major is Biological Sciences. I used to teach in, in Ateneo de Iloilo. I started teaching in Ateneo de Iloilo in their junior high school before we had the K-12 program. And then I went to Saudi Arabia for two years, so I've taught in an international school in Saudi Arabia for two years. That was in 2014, 2016. Then when I got home, I helped my husband, who's the president of our review center back home. It was, uh, as I've mentioned, in Iloilo. And so when I went back, I went back as a part-time teacher in Ateneo de Iloilo, but that time, in 2016, I was already teaching in the senior high school. And of course, we had our review center. So our review center handled the lab, which is like our specialty. We also had our civil service review, which also made a lot of pastors. We've also produced a lot of pastors. And then, of course, we also have the MTOP. And then um, in 2016, I went here to, I came here to the United States. And currently, I'm teaching high school science in Manning High School. And so you're all very lucky because I've uh, I've already mentioned this, sabi ko nga, this pandemic is actually a blessing in disguise to all of you because I was not really doing this review online prior to the pandemic. So nung wala pa pong pandemic, nung wala pa pong COVID, I was just busy teaching my students and of course playing with my daughter. Some of you already know her as Baby Rain. But of course, because of the pandemic, natigil po lahat, our school was also closed and uh, we just had virtual learning with our students. In August, we'll be opening again. Our school is going to open again. But of course, so we are still going to do virtual learning. So virtual pa rin po yung magiging, uh, magiging klase namin, which means that we can still have a lot of time doing all the things that we are currently doing. Okay, so as sabi, sinasabi ko nga lagi that this has been a blessing to all of you because of course, I have started this YouTube channel. We've started this YouTube channel just in February of this year because nga marami kami masyadong time dahil walang pasok. Okay, so we welcome all of you and we are very glad that you could join us. Now, before we start, again, make sure that you have your notebook with you uh, and a piece of, or a piece of paper and a pen. I am also, um, I have been telling you this, I am recommending that you have your own notebook. Notebook is going to be very helpful and that uh, you have all your notes intact, 
okay? Because of course, you can easily just can go back to all of the things that we have taken notes of if you have an intact notebook. Okay, so let me just read this one. Hi, ma'am, I'm new here. It's my first time po sa live nyo, but I always visit your previous videos. Thank you po sa napaka-clear na discussion. I learned from it po. Thank you so much, okay? So thank you so much then for everyone who has been watching all our videos. Now, again, as I have mentioned previously, and alam na to ng ating mga previous students, ng ating mga steady set of students, please don't skip ads when you're watching my videos, and please don't abandon the videos. That means do not stop watching the video. So once you click the video, once you start watching a video, please watch it from the beginning until the end. All right? Now we go to our slideshow because I will be discussing a lot of stuff today. Now, again, this is another Gen Ed and Profit discussion. But before that, let me just clarify and let me just explain some new things that we are going to have. Now, I have been talking about our left re let reviewer, our confidential let sets. Let me just go back to our live stream here and share my screen. Okay, so again, this is another edition of our Gen Ed and Profit discussion. I have been talking about our book, this one that I still have here. I have one copy from the Philippines. Okay, I have uh, uh, I have taken this from the Philippines, of course. And we have been mentioning all this since the beginning of our live stream. Okay, so we have our let reviewer, most updated review materials. This is just a compilation of all the, all the Gen Ed and let um and professional ed that we have in our let sets okay so marami po siyang uh, questions there's more than 10,000 questions here compilation of all previous let uh let exams that we had now if you can if you have a chance also please visit our facebook page that's guru pinoy our official facebook page and make sure that it is our own page with the correct logo for guru pinoy and if you can also check study link study link is a facebook profile and it was uh, created prior to us having our own facebook page and study link has a lot of feedback from our previous students so you can see all the feedback from our previous students there saying that um they have easily passed the lab because of all the things that we are discussing, because of all the things that we are teaching them. Okay, so again, this is a very powerful tool and this has helped a lot of our students pass the lab. Okay, so karamihan po sa aming mga estudyante, tutok po sila dito sa lab reviewer, sinabi ko na to minsan, uh, I have already mentioned this last time. I've said that during their final coaching for at least two weeks, they have been going over all the materials that they have here. So parang naglilet sila every day. So they go to the center in the morning. They shouldn't be late. And then they answer Gen Ed. They answer Prof Ed. Then we discuss it in the afternoon. Now, I have uh, told you before that we might arrange and we might check all the items here. We might... Uh, finalize all the items and finalize all the materials that we have and we are going to sell the materials that we have for your let reviewer and that is gen ed and prof ed now yung kagandahan ng ating let sets yung ating actual let sets and confidential sets natin is that coming push from the previous let exam and as i have mentioned to all of you we already know how the let works so sa let po the questions are all just recycled and so as you have uh, noticed in our previous live stream, some of you have already taken the lab. Uh, we're saying that this item has already come out in the previous lab. This item came out last year or this item came out in another year. Okay, so we already know how the lab works. But your lab reviewer, this one, the lab set, this one only comprises of the gen ed and the prof ed. We have another material, another set of materials, another book for our major ship so lahat po na major meron din kami and the, the the cover of our major ship book is it's colored blue we are still um into negotiating all the lectures that can help us with the major ship my husband has already talked with um uh, our lecturer for math his um um laptop not sure summa cum laude already a phd holder and but right now our concern concern is just our let set. So again, the let set would just be Gen Ed and Prof Ed. And we have mentioned that we are going to try to 
collate everything and fix everything so we can start disposing it for all of you okay so uh alam namin that you are all very interested in having a copy of our let reviewer dahil ika nga sabi namin this is really focused it is actually really useless for you to go to a review center and listen to countless of hours just listening to all the discussion that they have pero hindi naman nila alam kung anong lalabas sa let Okay, but our let set, the ones that I was talking about, ito po ay concentrated na, ito po ay targeted na. So, alam na namin kung anong lalabas. And ang kagandahan nito, if you have your own copy, then you'll know the answer to the question. So, if you see the question, all you need to do is to pick the correct answer. You don't need to think anymore. You don't need to to take a lot of time anymore to solve a certain problem or to think about a certain question because you already know what the answer already going to be. All right, now uh, in relation to this, if you want to be one of our countless thousands of students who have passed the let in just one take, who did not have a difficult time in taking their let, who are very well equipped, who were very ready when they took the let because we have, of course, uh, prepare them in the best that we can. I've already mentioned we have been doing this for uh, more than 10 years already in Iloilo prior to coming here in South Carolina, USA and prior to relocating here. I am strongly suggesting that you get your own copy of our LED set. Okay, now how can you get the materials for the LED set that we have here? This very powerful tool that we have here. This is the most powerful tool that we had when we had our review center and even now. Some of the items that I'm discussing are also from here. Okay, now how are you going to get this? Um, we are going to be forming what we call GROW. Okay, this is your exclusive group. This is going to be an exclusive group for all of you. And we call this GROW, or this is Gurong Pinoy Review Online Work Group. Okay, And this, as I have mentioned, is going to be an exclusive FB group. Now, what are you going to find in this exclusive FB group? All the materials that I am discussing in my live streams, all the materials that I'm giving away as freebies, all the materials that I'm discussing in my usual videos are going to be found in our GROW an exclusive FB group, an exclusive Facebook group. And of course, it's going to be ready for you to download and ready for you to print, okay? So it's gonna be available for you to just print. It's going to be available for you to download. For the lab item, so we have Gen Ed and Prof Ed that I am discussing, there's also going to be the answer key, okay? that's There's going to be an answer key, but of course, your discussion the discussion is only is also going to be is also going to still be here in our live stream okay it's going to be here in our live stream for uh the discussion but your gen ed and prof ed items those that are i am including in our uh discussion for the live stream and also those other materials that i have in our in my videos and all the freebies that i have i am going to post in your Gurung Pinoy Review Online Work Group, or what we call GROW, an exclusive FB group. And you can just easily download it. You can just easily print it for your own consumption, okay? Now, this is instead of compiling this and selling this to all of you and sending this to all of you, maybe by soft copy or hard copy through LBC or whatever, okay? So, hindi na po namin ipapadali papadala ito as a soft copy. Uh, we are also not going to send this as a hard copy, but we are going to just be forming our Guru Pinoy Review Online Work Group. At dyan na po i-download lahat. Dyan na po makukuha, i-preprint lahat ng mga materials na aking dinidiscuss, pati na din yung mga materials ko for my um, usual videos and also all the rest of the freebies that I have. So you don't need to send me a message anymore through our uh email or you don't need to leave your email address anymore you can just easily go to grow okay that's going to be an exclusive fb group now you might be wondering how can we be part of grow okay how can you be part of grow paano nga ba maging parte ng sinasabi natin grow nga na exclusive fb group natin uh before we start before we go to that would like to be part of this exclusive uh, group that we have. Sino gustong maging kaparte ng GROW? Who'd like to become a member of GROW? To have uh, the convenience of just having the materials easily printed, easily downloaded, and um, 
just go back to the materials that we have, all the things that we are discussing in our live stream, who'd want to be part of GROW or Gurung Pinoy Review online work group. If you'd want to be part of this, please comment with number one right now. Good morning sa lahat-lahat. Ang dami na natin ngayon. Okay, again, just comment with the number one if you'd want to be part of GROW. Again, this is instead of sending you the soft copy of our materials, instead of sending you the hard copy of the materials that we have collated. And of course, it's gonna be for sale, but we are not going to do that anymore since uh, we think your exclusive FB group is going to be an easier way for all of you. All right, now I can see a lot of you have commented with number one, thank you so much. And a lot of you are going to become the pioneer members of GROW, which is Guru Pinoy Review Online Work Group. All right, now again, GROW is going to be an online review platform for all of you. You have all the materials there. You can just easily download the materials. You can easily just print the materials. Now, the next question probably in your mind is, how much do I pay? How much do you think do you need to pay for you to be part of GROW, for you to have all the confidential let set items that we have here in our exclusive review materials? How much do you think would that be? Thank you so much, Ma Mary Grace Gayo. She sent us our super sticker. Thank you so much, Paul, for the support for Gurung Pinoy. Okay, now, how much do you think it will take you? How much do you think you need to pay for you to be part of GROW and to have your hands on our review materials? Comment nga po kayo kung magkano sa tingin nyo ang kailangan yung ibayad para magkaroon kayo ng lahat ng materials na meron tayo. Instead of paying for it as soft copy, instead of paying for it as maybe hard copy through LBC, how much do you think is it worth to learn all of these materials, to have all the list of our questions, to have all um, all uh, the downloadable freebies that we have? None of you are commenting the price. Okay, now let me give you an idea. Many review centers right now, they're offering online. Some of them are offering uh, blended, okay, blended discussion, and many of them are offering the price of 5000 okay? Do you think 5000 is too much? Would that be too much? If you think it's too much, please comment with, yes, too much. Okay, 5000 Do you think 5000 would be too much for you to pay for online materials, for all the things that um, I'm discussing, for all the questions that I have in my uh, review set? Okay, your actual let set. Okay, some of you are commenting 1,000, 500, 999, 500. Gusto ko po hard copy. Now, Sir Arthur Ibaok, because of the pandemic nga that we have right now, we cannot send it to you by or, or as hard copy. All you can do is just download it. If you want to have it na, uh, tangible, kasi marami naman sa atin gusto talaga na uh, nahahawakan no, yung mga materials, yung tinatawagan natin na na old style of studying, then you can just easily print all the materials. Okay, now Ma Maris is saying, yes, it's too much because enrolled din siya sa isang review center. Yes, it's too much. Okay, now you're saying that 5,000 is too much. A lot of you are saying 1,999, 500. Now say we cut the price to just 50% of 5,000, which is 2,500. Do you still think it's too much? Okay, Sir Poimnesha, welcome back. We missed you. Sir Poimnesha is saying 750. Okay, so that's way below 2,500. Okay, Ma'am Aida is saying kung it's worth it at papasaka, 5,000 is kulang if we pass it and it is uh, for our benefit. Okay, so Ma'am Caroline is saying, pwede na, pwede na yung 2.5 talaga. Okay, yes, 500. A lot of you are saying 2.5 is pwede na. But for me, I think 2.5 is, 
Yes, Mom Checky says yes. Kasi wala pa ako trabaho. Sorry po. Yes, too much. For me, actually, two five is still a bit expensive. Now say we lower it down to just fifty percent of two five, which is one thousand two hundred fifty. Do you think that would be okay? One thousand two hundred fifty. Tama na ba yung presyo one thousand two hundred fifty? Okay, again, 1,250, you have all the materials that you have. You have the let set. Uh, our discussion, all the things that I'm discussing would still be here in our YouTube channel. But um, the answer key and the questions, you can easily download. All the freebies, you can easily download. So, nandun na po, i-upload ko na lang. Hindi ko na kailangan yung uh, email address nyo. Hindi, hindi nyo na rin kailangan... Uh, ibigay sa akin yung email address uh, email address nyo, no? Okay, so sabi, sabi ni Sir Jordan Ken, pwede na yung 2,500 bayaman. Ma'am Lerma, 999. Pwede po 500. Sabi ni Ma'am Checky, okay na po para sa LPT. Okay, now 1,250. The last price that we have here on this slide, 1,250. Pwede rin po 1,250. Now, I still think uh, you know, when we when we had um konting kwento lamang, when we had our review center, as I have mentioned, my husband and I were managing our review center. So uh yung husband ko, siya talaga yung nasa finance side ng lahat ng bagay. Ako nasa lesson lang ako eh. Pag pag pera kasi pinag-uusapan, medyo bobo na ako. So hindi ako marunong sa pera. So yung husband ko lagi yung nasa business side of things. But you know, when we had our our lab review center and when we had our review center we had so many students who became our scholars and it was very easy for our students to alam mong mag promissory note kahit na bayaran na api pwede sila mag promissory note because of course hindi naman kami mayaman hindi naman kami galing sa mayamang angkan and alam namin kung saan kayo nang gagaling kung saan nang gagaling yung mga tao alam namin yung hirap at alam namin kung paano uh, kumayod ang ating mga magulang para lamang makabayad tayo ng 5,000, uh, 7,000. When we had our review, uh, when when we had our review center, the physical review center, your ang aming B ed was 5,500, ang aming BS ed is 7,000. Uh, kalakip na doon yung major ship. Okay? So, Ma Sir Napoleon is saying 2,500 is fair na, okay? But the last price that we have here is 1,250. At sabi ko nga, Dahil sa kinakaharap nating pandemic ngayon, pandemya ng ngayon, alam namin kahit nandito kami sa Amerika, of course, sinusubaybayan namin, nakaantabay kami sa lahat ng balita na nandiyan sa ating uh, bansa, sa Philippines, and we know that life there is very, very hard, okay? So, even this 1,250 na price, I will lower it down pa for you, okay? Um, malaking tulong po ito sa inyo, and we want to really help you pass the let sa amin lamang po para hindi na kami gumasto sa pagpiprint, sa pagpapadala ng ating materials and of course it's going to be very convenient na din para sa inyo it's going to be very easy to just um to just download all the materials very easy for you to just print hindi na ako manghihingi sa inyo ng email address dahil kasi minsan eh hindi naman kayo pare-pareho ng time to to send your email address and of course we have our time difference of 12 hours so minsan Ay tulog na ako, saka kayo magsisend ng message na ma'am, please send this. So kung inyo napapansin, med medyo may delay, minsan may delay na one day yung pag pagsisend ko sa inyo ng materials. Okay, but if we have our grow, our exclusive FB group, it's going to just be easy for you. Right after our review, I'll be posting all the materials there and you can just easily download it. Okay, so Mom Checky says 500, 1,250, 2,5 is fair na para kay Sir Napoleon. But actually, the price that we're asking from you now, I think, pasok ito sa budget, it's very easy for all of you to pay, is just 250 pesos. Okay, so 250 pesos lamang po ang ating magiging presyo sa ating grow, which is our exclusive FB group. Okay, so 250 lamang po. You already have all the materials that we have here, all the let, uh, let discussion that we have, Gen Ed and Prof Ed, all the freebies that I have. You can already download it for 250. Okay, so 250 pesos lamang po. Now, I have uh, the Metro Bank savings, savings account there of my husband. The account name is Ramil Manai. And you have the account number. If you want, then you can just take a picture of that. 
Okay, just take a picture of um, the, what's this, the, the account number. Again, that's 250. Pwede po itong uh, bayaran nyo na as soon as you can. Po, pwede din naman na pag-ipunan nyo muna. So mag-ipon mag -ipun muna kayo ng 250. And then once you are ready, then you can just send it. Po, pwede nyo pong isend yan through the savings account. Again, please take a screenshot of the savings account where you can send it. Now, once you have sent the, the payment, just send us the receipt. Po, pwede nyo pong isend as an inbox to Gurong Pinoy, our official Facebook page. Or po, pwede din pong through email, i-attach nyo lang yung inyong receipt at isend us through email. At of course, give us your name in Facebook, okay? So, ibigay nyo po yung pangalan nyo sa, sa Facebook so that you can uh, easily join our group. You can be added to our group. Again, Metro Bank Savings account is there, Ramil Manaay, and your account, the, the account number is there, okay? Yes, uh, Sir Jerly ba or Ma'am Jerly, mag-ipon muna. O okay po yan. Uh, kayang kaya pong mag-ipon. Uh, si Ma'am Aida, uh, how do you pay? Uh, the details is, are there po. So, po, pwede nyo pong kunin yung details. That's the account name and that's the account number. Now, for some of you, uh, for some of you who's, who think na hindi siya convenient yung Metro Bank Savings Account nga, no? Kasi banko, po, pwede din naman po kayo magpadala ng payment nyo through Palawan or Cebuana. Palawan or Cebuana lamang po. Huwag na po yung ML kasi medyo mahirap. And you address it to this name. That's my sister-in-law. So that's Richelle uh, Villanueva. The address po is just Iloilo City. And then the phone number is just there. Okay, now please take a picture of that. Uh, yes, Ma'am Cheque, as I have mentioned, medyo mahirap po kasi yung ML. So, Palawan lamang po at Cebuana. I'm not sure how the GCash works. Hindi ko po, hindi ako familiar with the GCash. Uh, so, hindi ko tinanong kung paano yung GCash. But you can send it through Palawan or Cebuana. Okay, so a lot of you are still asking about ML. Again, you can still just send it through G, uh, through not Gcash, through Palawan or Cebuana or the Metro Bank uh, savings account that I have given you a while ago. I will be asking kung po pwede yung ML kasi medyo mahirap kasi yung ML. Hindi ko alam kung bakit sinabi nila na medyo mahirap magpadala sa ML. Okay, baka malayo. Alright, so Palawan and Cebuana po. That's the name, that's the address, and that's the phone number. Now, make sure that you just send your... Western Union, baka po pwede din pong Western Union. Okay, so Palawan daw, sabi ni Ma'am Cheki, is mas mura. Okay, so Palawan or Cebuana lamang po. Okay, so Palawan po, okay po. All right, so whatever is uh, comfortable, whatever is convenient for all of you, po pwedeng doon sa savings account, the Metro Bank, po pwedeng Palawan or Cebuana. Basta, eh, just inform us para ma-add ma po kayo kaagad doon sa ating exclusive uh, ex exclusive FB group or grow. Okay? Now, enough of all these finances. no Sabi ko nga sa inyo, basta pera, bobo din po ako. Wala akong alam sa pera. Okay? Now, uh, I will be presenting this live stream schedules to all of you. Mas pag-iigtingin po natin ang ating pag-review. Mas uh, frequent po, mas often po ang ating live stream. And for this month, for the month of July, our live stream schedule is going to be the following. So Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 7 p.m. po. Okay? So please take note of our schedule. It's going to be Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 7 p.m. every week. Pwera lamang po Tomorrow, okay? Hindi po included ang Thursday na bukas. Okay? Of course, uh, bukas ay Thursday, pero wala po tayong review to tomorrow, okay? Wala po tayong uh, review bukas, Thursday. So, this week, ang next schedule natin will be on Saturday. But after that, the next schedule for all the live streams will be Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Make sure that you mark your calendars. Make sure that you hit the bell notification and that you are subscribed, of course, so that you'll be notified kung kailan tayo merong live stream ulit. Okay? So, uh, Ma'am Saina, hanggang uh, within the month, you can still pay. Okay, Gcash... If, if Gcash is easy for you, then go ahead and just pay through Gcash. But the important thing is that you notify us 
and that you tell us uh, that you have paid, you send us the receipt para po maad na kayo kaagad doon sa ating um, exclusive group. All right, so again, live stream schedules for this month, for the month of July, would be Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, all at 7 p.m. But except po bukas, wala pong review bukas, wala po tayong... Uh, Wala po tayong review tomorrow, okay? So after this live stream today, the next schedule would be on Saturday, okay? So Saturday, 7 p.m. Again, please make sure that you have your notebook with you. Please make sure that you have your pen with you. Make sure that your review materials are all intact. All the questions that we have here are going to be available in Grow. That's Gurung Pinoy Review Online Work Group. And that's going to be your exclusive FB group once you have already paid your sinasabi natin enrollment fee or join fee. Uh, what number? Nandito po yung number, ma'am. Okay, so again, please take a, a screenshot. Uh, this one is smart. Okay, yung 09112 is smart. I will be asking for the globe number later, and I'll be asking for uh, Gcash. Siguro po ay magsisend na lang ako ng message for those people who have commented with Gcash. Uh, meron question dito, ma'am, if makabayad na, saan mag-message? Punta po kayo at uh, sa ating Gurung Pinoy na uh, Facebook page at doon po kayo mag-message. Or po pwede din po na, po pwede din po na um, mag-email kayo, studylingteacherspage at gmail.com. Okay, July 4. Again, the next schedule that we have is going to be on Saturday. Ano nga ba yung Saturday? Yes, it's July 4. So Saturday po ang ating next live stream after this live stream that we have today. But after that, the schedule will be Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all 7 p.m. So don't forget our class schedule will be Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, 7 p.m. But that's only going to start. We will start this week sa Saturday. Okay? Wala po tayong pasok bukas. Wala pong live stream tomorrow. All right? So again... Thank you so much for all your support and thank you so much for those people who have already sent their commitment to be in our group. Okay, that's our exclusive FB group. Now, we'll start with today's discussion. Now, as I've mentioned, we are going to have our live streams more often. So that's Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, 7 p.m. Except tomorrow, wala pong klase uh, bukas. And because of that, in our gen ed and profit discussion, at para din hindi kayo mabor, hindi kayo maburyong, at para din hindi kayo, hindi nyo ma-reach yung tinatawag nating learning plateau na wala nang pumapasok sa inyong ulo, ay mas pinashorten ko po itong mga items natin nandito ngayon sa ating live stream. So instead of having 25 items or 30 items, uh, the last time we have 50 items gen ed, 50 items prof ed, and then we went to to 25 items gen ed, 20, 25 items prof ed. Ngayon po, starting today, starting in this live stream, we are going to have just 30 items total. So 30 items total lamang po. That's 15 items gen ed and 15 items prof ed para naman po hindi kayo masyadong mabor, hindi, yung, hindi nyo ma-reach yung point na wala nang pumapasok sa inyong ulo dahil masyado na mahaba. Okay? And then make sure that you don't abandon our videos, don't skip ad. So yung sinasabi ko po ngayon, gen ed will be 15 items Items and Prof Ed is going to also be 15 items. We are still going to get 60% of all the items that we have here. So sa Gen Ed, dapat e magkaroon kayo ng 9 points and Prof Ed, magkaroon kayo ng 9 points para makapasa kayo. And total points would be 18 out of 30. Okay, so dapat po maka 18 out of 30 tayo. Alright, so again, please write the numbers 1 until 15 for Gen Ed. Then also the numbers 1 until 15 for Prof Ed, we are going to start. Okay, we start with question number one. Number one, rights that cannot be renounced or transferred because they are necessary for the fulfillment of men's primordial obligations are called what? Is it letter A, alienable? Letter B, perfect? Letter C, inalienable? Letter D, acquired? Okay, ano kaya yung answer natin sa number one? Again, please write the numbers 1 until 15. We'll have 15 items gen ed, 15 items prof ed, so that we won't waste a lot of time in each of the LS. Okay, we'll try to keep our live streams as short as we can. 
Okay, hindi masyadong mahaba, hindi kayo mabuburyong. So we'll have 15, 15. But of course, we are going to do this more often. So again, sabi ko, in July, in this month, we are going to have our schedule on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturday evenings, all at 7 p.m., except tomorrow. So tomorrow po is Thursday, but we are not going to have any live stream tomorrow. So we will start on Saturday. Okay, so meron po tayong live stream starting Saturday and that's going to be regular na po, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Okay, so many of you are already answering rights that cannot be renounced or transferred because they are necessary for the fulfillment of man's primordial obligations are called. Now, let me just discuss some of the things that we have here. Letter B natin dito, a perfect right. Pag sinabi bang perfect right, when you say perfect right, this is a right that is recognized and enforceable by law. Okay? So, ito ay isang klase ng right na nire-recognize ng ating law at ine-enforce. Which means that if you violate someone else's perfect right, then you can go to jail. Okay, so these are some fundamental rights. Example, the right to equality, the right to religion. Okay, the basic human rights are called perfect rights. And usually, ito din yung mga klase ng rights na nakikita natin sa mga uh, employment contracts. Okay, whatever is legal right, that is a perfect right. Okay, so yan po yung tin tinatawag natin perfect right. Now, ano naman yung alienable right? Alienable rights can be surrendered or transferred to another. For example, property rights. Pag meron kang bahay, meron kang right over that house. But once you sell the house to another person, once you have sold that house to another person, then your right is also surrendered, surrendered or transferred to that person. So when you say alienable rights, these are rights that you can transfer to another person. These are rights that you can surrender. Okay, so alienable rights are those that you can surrender, that are those that you can transfer. Now, kabalik taran naman ito, ang inalienable rights. Pag sinabin mo namang inalienable rights, opposite siya ng alienable rights mo, which means you cannot transfer this to another person. This right only belongs to you. You cannot surrender this, you cannot transfer this to another person. So examples for this would be your natural rights, the right to life, yung right mo as a citizen of the Philippines, for example, you cannot transfer it to your husband if you have a husband who's a foreigner. Hindi mo po pwede sabihin na, I have the right, I have the right because I'm a Filipino citizen. I have the rights of the citizens of the Philippines, so I am going to transfer these rights to my husband. Okay, who's a foreigner? Hindi po po pwede. Okay, inalienable rights are not surrendered, are not transferred to another person. Okay, now, ang letter D mo naman, acquired, pag sinabi mo namang acquired, hindi siya klase ng right, but this is one type or uh, one type of status. Okay, one type of status po siya. Meron tayong sinasabing ascribed at acquired status. Now, what's the difference between your ascribed and acquired status? Pag sinabi mo pong ascribed status, the person is born with it. Nung pinanganak siya, meron na siyang status na ganyan. Okay? Nasa kanya na yung status na yan nung pinanganak siya or even before he or she was born. Habang nasa sinapupunan pa lamang siya ng kanyang nanay, eh, na, meron na siyang status na ganyan. Example, ay yung pagiging prince, pagiging princess na mga royal blood na meron sa Inglaterra. Okay? So, so princess, si Princess Charlotte, for example, or si Prince uh, Charles, si Prince William, si Prince Harry, they already have that ascribed status even before they were born. Okay? So that means, um, nung pinanganak sila, meron na silang status na ganyan. Ang status na yan ay nakuha nila dahil sa kanilang birthright, dahil sa kanilang kapanganakan, na mamana. Okay? That's ascribed status. Ang acquired status naman, ito ay pinaghihirapan. Okay, this is something that you work hard for. For example, your status of being a licensed teacher, your status of being a licensed doctor, that's an acquired status. Pinaghirapan mo yan, okay? So that's the difference between the two types of statuses that we have. Ascribed, uh, you have this because of birthright, dahil sa kapanganakan mo, dahil sa lahi mo. Acquired status naman, you have this because of your drive, because of your commitment, because of hard work, okay? So that's acquired status. But for number one, the correct answer here would be letter C, inalienable right. Dahil sabi dito, cannot be renounced or transferred. Okay, cannot be renounced, cannot be surrendered, 
or transferred. So that's letter C, inalienable rights. All right, go ahead, please check your work if the answer is correct. If your answer is letter C, please put a check mark. We are going to count your scores uh, after this. All right, now question number two in Filipino. Laging umuukilkil sa isipan ng ama ang nasirang pangako ng anak. Anong ibig sabihin ng salitang umuukilkil? Is it letter A, sumasagi? Letter B, gumugulo? Letter C, bumubuhay? Letter D, sumasapi? What's the correct answer for number two? This is Filipino. Okay, so more answer for letter B, uh, for number two, sorry. Uh, if you have already sent your payment, just send us your receipt. Pupwede po kayong pumunta sa Gurong Pinoy official Facebook, Facebook page at isend nyo po doon ang inyong receipt. Just send us an, a private message through our Facebook page. Sa GCash naman, I will be asking kung anong number. So dapat yung globe number siya, di po ba? So I will ask because the number that we had a while ago is a smart number. All right, now a lot of you already are already answering number two. So let's go back to our question here. Again, the question for number two is laging umuugkilkil sa isipan ng ama ang nasirang pangako ng anak. Anong ibig sabihin ng salitang umuugkilkil? Tingnan natin kung anong ibig sabihin ng umuugkilkil. Umuugkilkil means nanunuot sa utak. Hindi nyo makalimutan, gumugulo sa utak nyo, kahit anong gawin nyo, pabalik-balik siya sa inyong utak. Okay? Nakadikit siya sa inyong utak. So nanunuot sa utak. Ito po yung ibig sabihin ng word na Umuukilkil. So the correct answer, therefore, for number two would be letter B, gumugulo. Okay, so letter B po ang tamang sugot natin. So number two, that is gumugulo. Hindi lamang sumasagi dahil pag sumasagi lamang eh, naiisip mo lamang paminsan-minsan. Hindi, hindi din po pwedeng bumubuhay. Hindi din sumasapi. The correct answer is letter B, gumugulo. So again, letter B, number two, that's the correct answer. Please put a check mark if your answer is correct. Uh, we go to number three. This is still in Filipino. Wag kang maniwala sa bulaklak na kanyang matamis na dila. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Ito ba'y panunukso? Ito'y pambubola? Ito'y pagbibiro? Ito'y pagsisinungaling? Okay, what do you think is the correct answer for number three? Okay, so Ma'am Aja, I've already received your message. Right after the live stream po, we are going to add you to the group. Make sure that you have sent a copy of your receipt po. All right, so number three. Going back to number three, wag kang maniwala sa bulaklak ng kanyang matamis na dila. Anong ibig sabihin nito? The correct answer here, pag sinabi mong mabulaklak ang dila, ano nga bang ibig sabihin ng mabulaklak ang, ng dila? Correct answer would be, ito'y pambubola. So pag sinabi mong ikaw talaga ay merong mabulaklak na dila, ang ibig sabihin na niyan ay bolero ang isang tao, ang, ang isang lalaki. Okay? So it's ito'y pambubola, letter B, for number three. Now we go to number four. This is math. Okay, number four is math. Out of the 50 students enrolled in a class, 90% took the finals. Two-thirds of those who took the exam passed. How many students passed the exam? Okay, no, yung tamang sagot sa number four.
Uh, Sir Ramil Manaay, if you're watching, that's my husband, please give us the um, phone number if they'd want to, many of them would want to, to send through Gcash. So please send us the phone number where they can send it. Uh, because many are saying that Gcash is more convenient for them. Maraming nagsasabi na Gcash ay preferred nila. So please send us a number where they can send the payment through Gcash. Okay, number four. Oh, iba-iba na yung answer niyo sa number four. My B, my D. My A. Okay, we go back to question number four. Sabi ng question number four mo, in math, out of the 50 students enrolled in a class, 90% took the finals. Two-thirds of those who took the exam passed. So how many students passed the exam? Now, as I have mentioned before, when you see the word of, in math, this means multiply. So multiplication po yung ibig sabihin ng of. This is another of here, which means another multiply. So sa makatawid, yung gagawin, gagawin nyo lamang po ay imumultiply nyo 50 by 90% and by two-thirds. Okay? So yung mag, uh, magiging mathematical statement nyo or sentence nyo would be 50 times 0 0.9. Ang 0 0.9 po, kinuha natin sa 90%. So 90%, of course, the decimal point is here. We just move the decimal point two times to the left. That's why we have 0 0.9. Okay, so 50 multiplied by 0 0.9 multiplied by two-thirds. Again, as I have mentioned, the term of means multiply in math. Okay, so that's all. That's multiply. So just multiply everything. Now say we started by multiplying 50 times 0 0.9. 50 times 0 0.9 is just 45. And we multiply this uh, product. 45, which is a product of 50 and 0 0.9 by two thirds. So, you multiply mo ito by two thirds. What happens is you multiply 45 by two. So, 45 by two. Okay, you multiply that. That's going to give you 90. Then you divide that by three. Okay, which is the denominator in your fraction, which gives us the answer of 30. Okay, so tamang sagot po sa number four would be 30. 30 is the correct answer for question number four. So again, if you see the word of in math, it means multiply. Okay, so just multiply everything. Again, 50 multiplied by 0 0.9 is 45. Then 45 multiplied by two thirds, you multiply 45 by the numerator first, 45 multiplied by 2, that's 90. Then you divide that by the denominator, which is 3. And so we have 30 as the correct answer. Okay, so number 4, that's 30. Letter D. Now we go to number 5. Number 5 is still a math question. The volume of a cube is found by cubing the measure of its edges. What is the volume if each edge is 4 centimeters? Okay, this is a very easy math question. Okay, so in kada edge daw, kada edge ng uh, cube mo ay 4 centimeters. So what would be the volume? And we know that the volume of a cube is just taken by multiplying its length times width times its height. Or the edge cube, edge raised to the third power. What do you think is the correct answer for number five? All right, many of you are already answering. So again, volume is just length times width times, times height or edge cube. Okay, so that's simply four times four times four or four cube. And that gives us 64 centimeters. Okay, 64 centimeters, number five is letter B. Okay, many of you got the correct answer. So number five is letter B. Please put a check mark if your answer is correct. Now we go to number six. 
If the scores in a math test of 45 students are arranged from the highest to the lowest, the 23rd score is the blank. Is it letter A, the mean, letter B, the variance, letter C, median, or letter D, the mode? Okay, what's the answer for number six? You have a score, We ha you have the scores of 45 students in math. And you arrange their scores from highest to the lowest. Anong tawag mo sa 23rd score? Is it the mean, the variance, the median, or the mode? Okay, ano kaya yung tawag natin sa 23rd score? Is it the mean, the median, the variance, or the mode? Okay, a lot of you are already answering. Now, when you say mean, pag sinabi natin mean, arithmetic mean, this is the average. Now, you know how to get the average. What you do is you add up all the scores and you divide that by the number of scores. Now, the variance naman, this is a measure of dispersion or measure of variability. Okay, now the median, the median is the middlemost score and the mode, of course, that's the most frequently appearing score. Ito yung pinakamaraming score mo. For example, out of 45 students, marami sa kanila nakakuha ng 20. Okay, so that's going to be your mode. Now, if you haven't watched our video yet about the mean, median, and mode, please write a reminder in your notebook. Watch the mean, median, and mode video. It is found in our general education playlist. It can also be found in our assessment of learning playlist. All right, now in this case here, I think it's pretty obvious, correct answer is letter C, the median, pinakagit ng score siya. So letter C, the median is your 23rd score. Number seven, families of OFWs meet a lot of conflicts. How does the government address this? Is it letter A, increase, insurance benefits letter b encourage more opportunities for ofws letter c provide scholarships for husbands left behind to study letter d none of these ano kaya yung tamang sagot sa number seven Again, I would like to thank Ma'am Mercy Grace Gayo for your support to Gurung Pinoy. She has sent us our super sticker um, and she gave 50 pesos. Thank you so much, Po, for all your help, all your support to Gurung Pinoy. Okay, number seven. What do you think is the correct answer for number seven? Ang pamilya da ng mga OFWs, overseas Filipino workers, ay maraming conflicts, maraming problema kinakaharap. So how does the government address this? nag increase ng insurance benefits, nag encourage ng more opportunities for OFWs, nagpo-provide ng scholarships for husbands left behind to study, or none of this. Now, we cannot choose none of this here. There is a probable correct answer here. We also cannot choose letter C. Dahil sabi ng letter C, provide scholarships for husbands left behind. Medyo um, may discrimination dito. So, ibig sabihin ng letter C mo, karamihan ba or lahat ba ng mga OFWs na nagtatrabaho ay mga babae? Hindi naman po. Okay? Marami ding lalaking OFW. So, hindi lamang husbands. May discrimination na itong letter C mo. Which leave us with just A and B. So, ano nga ba yung Tamang sagot, is it increase insurance benefits or encourage more opportunities for OFWs? The correct answer for this one would be letter B, encourage more opportunities for OFWs. Okay, para wala nang masyadong mga ibang bansa, pag marami ng opportunities sa Pilipinas, ay wala nang magiging OFW or kukonti na lang magiging OFW. Okay, but of course we know that hindi ganun karaming oportunidad sa Pilipinas uh, kaya marami pa rin sa ating mga kababayan katulad namin ang nangihibang bansa para makaranas din ng uh, mas magandang buhay at para na rin magkaroon ng professional and personal growth. Okay, so letter B is to encourage more opportunities for OFWs. That's number seven. Please put a check mark if your answer is correct. Number eight, how does DOST assure quality science teaching in secondary schools? 
Is it letter A, open science high schools in provinces? Letter B, share researches and distribute equipment to schools? Letter C, have one science fair every year? Or letter D, maintain scholarship grants for science and math teachers? How are we assured or how are we, how does the DOST get the assurance that quality science teaching is done in secondary schools or in high schools? Ano bang ginagawa ng DOST, Department of Science and Technology? Okay, go ahead and answer number eight. All right, so iba-iba po yung answers nyo sa number eight. Okay, now the correct answer here is, going back to our question, how does DOST assure quality science teaching in secondary schools? Is it letter A, open science high schools in provinces? Letter B, share researches and distribute equipment to schools? Letter C, have one science fair every day, every year? Or letter D, maintain scholarship grants for science and math teachers? Nagbibigay ba ng scholarship para sa math and science teacher? May science fair ba? Or parang may my exhibit every year. Nagsishare ba sila ng researches and nagdi-distribute ng equipment sa kada school? Or is it to open science high schools in the provinces? Parang wala yatang nakakuha ng tamang sagot. Because the correct answer here would be letter A, to open science high schools in provinces. Kaya po tayo merong mga Philippine Science High School. Okay? Tinatawag po nating Philippine Science High, high School. Okay, Ma'am Ren Garcia, sabi niya hindi po ako makasagot. Uh, nakikinig lang ako habang ginagawa yung gawain. Okay lang po yan. Okay lang po yan, Ma'am Ren. Uh, you can just go back later or you can maybe just try answering later when you already have your your own copy. Sabi po natin, uh, once you become a member of GROW, you can have this um, downloaded. So, magkakaroon po kayo ng materials na pwede nyo i-download at pwede nyo i-print. So, po pwede nyo pong balikan. Okay? So, number eight, again, the correct answer is letter A, to open science high schools in provinces. Kaya tayo merong mga Philippine science high schools. Now, idagdag ko lang po ito dahil baka po lumabas sa let ninyo. Last time po lumabas din ito si Dr. Josette Tibio. She is uh, a fellow Ilonga. Galing din po siya ng Iloilo. And she is the former executive director of the Philippine science high school system. And more importantly, she is the first Asian, the first Filipino to win the Intel or International Excellence in Teaching Award in 2002. At dahil po dyan, ay nagkaroon siya ng isang planeta. There, there has been one minor planet that was named after her and the planet was called Planet Bio. Okay, and uh, dinagtag ko ito because currently she is the director of DOST SEI or Department of Science and Technology Secondary or Science um, Education Institute. Okay, so siya po yung current DOST SEI director. Uh, make sure that you have a copy of this and that you take note dahil baka po lumabas siya sa let. Now, another thing that I can give you as a tip, huwag po kayong kukuha ng let nang hindi nyo nalalaman yung cabinet members. Okay, hindi, uh, I'm not updated with the cabinet members, hindi ko na alam. I only have uh, the original cabinet members of President Duterte, hindi ko alam kung sino-sino na yung mga pinalit. Alam ko marami ng pinalitan, marami ng mga karambolang nangyari. So I cannot give you the copy of uh, the cabinet members dahil hindi, wala po akong update. I, I've tried searching it through the internet. I've tried searching it online. Wala po ako makita. Hindi ko alam bakit wala ako makita ang kopya ng lahat ng cabinet members ng Pangulong Duterte. But make sure that you know the names of the cabinet members. When we had our review center, ginagawa po namin itong key. Bago sila makapasok sa review center, bago sila maka-attend uh, ng review, ay kailangan munang sabihin nila or uh, sagutan nila na maayos ng tama kung sino mang cabinet member yung tinatanong namin. Okay? So, cabinet members, make sure that you review that prior to taking the let. All right. Now, we go to the next question. Number nine, a big majority of teachers were found to be suffering from PTB 
or pulmonary tuberculosis, what approach can best address this problem? What is the best solution to having a lot of teachers with PTB or pulmonary tuberculosis? Is it letter A, ask sick teachers to resign? Letter B, require sick teachers to wear masks? Letter C, follow up cases and coordinate with the DOH? Letter D, subject teachers or subject teachers to a yearly x-ray examination? Okay, tama yung sinabi mo, Ma'am Aida. Lagi kasi nagpapalit ngayon yung cabinet members. Kaya nga wala ako makita ang current cabinet members niya. Okay, kahit pum pumunta na ako sa malacanang.gov.ph, wala pa rin doon. Okay, so I cannot find, I cannot give you the complete list dahil hindi ko makita yung updated list. Okay, ano kaya yung tamang sagot sa number nine? What would be the best approach, the best remedy... Because we have a lot of teachers who are suffering from PTB or pulmonary tuberculosis. Okay, do we ask sick teachers to resign? Do we require sick teachers to wear masks? Do we follow up cases and coordinate with the DOH? Or letter D, subject teachers to a yearly x-ray examination. Now, the correct answer for number nine is... Letter D, subject teachers to a yearly x-ray examination. Alam naman po natin, totoo ito, even sa private schools and lalo na sa public schools, meron po sila tinatawag na yearly or annual physical exam, may yearly x-ray examination. Dahil nga sinasabi natin that prevention is always better than cure. Okay? So, mas mahalaga na ma-prevent ng lumala ang isang sakit kaysa sa gamutin ito. So the correct answer for number nine is letter D, subject teachers to yearly x-ray examination. That's correct, okay? So number nine is letter D. Now we go to number 10. Why are overseas Filipino workers considered modern time heroes? Bakit tinatawag natin ng ating mga OFWs na modern time heroes? Is it letter A, they are broad-minded, skilled, and economically stable? Letter B, they have helped stabilize our economy. Letter C, they feast with friends and family when on vacation. Letter D, they sacrifice just to improve their quality of life. Ano kaya yung tamang sagot sa number 10? Uh, alam ko naman, and I'm also aware that some of us here in our online classroom, marami din sa atin dito ang mga OFWs, no? Merong mga nagko-comment na, na, na nasa ibang bansa siya, may kukuha ng exam sa ibang bansa. Okay? So bakit nga ba consider na modern time heroes ang ating mga OFWs? Is it letter A, they're broad-minded, skilled, and economically stable? Letter B, they have helped stabilize our economy? Letter C, they feast with friends and family when on vacation? Or letter D, they sacrifice just to improve their quality of life? Okay, now let me go over the choices that we have for number 10. Kung inyo pong mapapansin, ang A, C, and D mo pare-pareho. Lahat naman ito tama actually, eh, di ba? Lahat sila tama. Lahat ito is true of our OFWs. Lahat ito tama pag iniisip natin yung OFW. They are broad-minded. So malawak na ang kanilang paningin, no? Ang kanilang pag-unawa ay malawak na. They're skilled, economically stable. They have helped stabilize our economy. They feast with friends and family when on vacation. Diba? Uh, parte ito ng ating kultura once na um, umuwi ka, nagpapakain ka, nagpapaparty ka sa yung mga friends and family. They sacrifice just, improve their, just to improve their quality of life. Lahat naman ito ay tama. Okay? Sa lahat ito ay tama. But now, ang question natin is, Bakit sila tinatawag na modern time heroes? Now, ang letter A po, letter A, letter C, and letter D, pag titingnan nyo ang letters A, C, and D, ito lamang po ay pertaining to the individual, para lamang sa kanila, personal. They are broad-minded, they are skilled, they are economically stable. Ang letter C naman, they feast with friends and family when on vacation. Personal pa rin po. 
Ang letter D then they sacrifice just to improve their quality of life. Nagsakripisyo sila para sa pamilya para ma-improve ang quality of life. That's still personal. Your correct answer here would be letter B. They have helped stabilize our economy. Ano ba yung nagiging tulong nila para sa ating bansa? Kaya kinoconsider sila, tinatawag sila na modern time heroes. And the correct answer is, nakaka-help silang maging mabuti ang ating ekonomiya dahil nga sa mga remittances nila. Dahil sa mga pinapadala nila, ay nagiging strong ang economy ng ating bansa. Kaya nga sinasabi natin ngayon, our um, best export are our OFWs. Okay? So yan yung pinakamalaking ambag sa ating econ economy. And that is our OF OFW. So ang A, C, and D mo are all just for personal reasons. Personal na rason lang, lamang po yan. Letter B po ang ating tamang sagot. Okay? So Ma'am Jara is watching from UAE. Uh, magandang araw po. Ma'am Junive is watching from Hong Kong. Okay, so letter B again is the correct answer. All right, so letter B, number 10, that's the correct answer. Okay, we go to number 11. Which of the following statements is true of nuclear fission? This is in science. Is it letter A, the process is identical to that which occurs in the sun? Letter B, energy is obtained when nucleus of atoms split? Letter C, matter from lighter atoms is changed into energy? Letter D, scientists combine lighter atoms to form heavier atoms. Okay, what do you think is the correct answer for number 11? Okay, some are already answering. There's C, B, C, A. Okay, so iba-iba yung, yung answer for number 11. Okay, let me explain uh, the choices that you have for number 11 here. Again, the question is, which of the following statements is true of nuclear fission? Before I go to that, let me just explain the different types of reactions that we have in chemistry. So sa chemistry po, meron tatlong, tatlong klase ng, ng, ng reactions. The first one is a physical reaction. Second one is a chemical reaction. And the third one is nuclear reaction. Pag sinabi mo pong physical reaction, walang bagong substance na form. Okay? There's no new substance form. It can be converted back. Pwede niyong ibalik sa original form ang inyong substance. Now, all phase or state changes are just physical change. Pag sinabi natin state change or change in the state of matter or phase changes in matter, examples nito would be boiling, freezing, melting. These are all just physical change. Lumalabas po yan sa let. Pag tinanong kayo ng let na uh, boiling happens when liquid water is uh, put into heat. Okay, and it forms water vapor. This is an example of what type of change. So yung magiging answer niyo po dyan would be physical change. Yung change po in the state of matter, which means ang change po from solid liquid to gas, that is just going to be a physical change. Pag in yung ice, ice of course is a solid water, pag nagmelt melt siya, magiging liquid water siya, tubig pa rin siya. So sinasabi natin pag physical change, walang bagong substance. From ice na solid water into liquid water, it's still water. Okay, so walang bagong substance. It can be converted back. Pupwede mo siyang maibalik sa pagiging ice, ilalagay mo lamang siya sa freezer. Okay, so that's your physical change. There is no new substance form. It can be converted back. Pag sinabi mo namang chemical change, there is a new substance form and it cannot be converted back. Cannot be converted back. There's a new substance form. And usually, meron kang sinasabing evidences for chemical change. Malalaman mo na chemical change pag merong smoke, may heating, may bubbles, may light, may amoy. Okay? So examples for this would be, for example, nag-bake ka ng cake. So meron kang flour, meron kang um, 
cake mix, for example, meron kang egg, may water ka. Now, you mix all of them and you put them in the oven, tapos nagkaroon ka ng, ng cake. Now, so may bagong substance na na-form at hindi mo na mako-convert ang mga materials or mga ingredients na meron ka. Hindi mo na makukuha yung itlog na fresh, hindi mo na makukuha yung tubig, hindi mo na makukuha yung flour. Okay? It cannot be converted back. My smoke, my heating, my bubbles, my light, my odor. Those are your chemical changes. One common example of a chemical change is rusting. Yung pagkakaroon ng kalawang. Okay? That's a chemical change. Digestion, decay, decomposition. These are all chemical change. Pag, pag, uh, nung, pag nagiging bulok ang isang bagay, no? that's a chemical change. Hindi mo na siya mababalik sa kanyang fresh state. Okay, so chemical change, there's a new substance form and you cannot you cannot convert it back to its original form. Now, meron din tayong tinatawag na nuclear change. Okay, ano naman ng nuclear change? This is a change in the nucleus, which is a central part of the atom. I have discussed this in our previous live stream, the different parts of your atom, your protons, neutrons, electrons. If you haven't watched the previous live stream, make sure that you check our playlist called Gen Ed and Prof at live streams. Lahat mo ng live streams nandun sa playlist na yon. Okay, so nuclear change is the change in the nucleus, which is the central part, the, se the center part of your atom. Now, there are two types of nuclear change, and these are fusion and fission. Pag sinabi niyo pong fusion, from the root word fuse, okay, this means to combine smaller nuclei to form a bigger nucleus. So yung mga maliliit na nucleus or nuclei ay finofuse mo po kino-combine mo para magkaroon ka ng bigger nucleus. One example for this is the formation of sun's energy. Ito po yung process kung paano gawin or paano maproduce ng sun ang kanyang energy. That's fusion. The opposite for this would be fission. Okay? The opposite is fission. This is the...
Okay, we're back guys. I'm so sorry. Nawalan po kami ng internet. I, I don't know kung ano nangyari. Okay, we're back po. For those of you who are asking, we are back. So we're going back to our discussion. I'm so sorry. There, something wrong happened with the internet. So I had to go down and check. Okay, now hindi ko alam kung saan na puto lang ating discussion kanina. I think, uh, oh, sabi ni Ma'am Che, Apostol, inaantok na. Nandito na po, nakabalik na po. All right, so... Uh, we we were talking about the different types of nuclear reactions. Hindi ko alam kung narinig nyo na. na narinig nyo na po ba yung discussion ko about the types of reactions? Please comment with number one if you have already heard this kanina, kung naabutan ito bago mawala ng connection. Uh, different types of reactions. Okay, please comment with the number one if naabutan na ninyo kanina ito, kung narinig nyo yung discussion ko kanina about the different types of reactions. Oh, sufficient na po ba, Ma'am Aida? Okay, so again, I have already discussed this bago tayo nawala kanina, no? may nagka-problema sa internet. Now, uh, we go to the different types of nuclear reactions that we have here. Again, this is by use of a Venn diagram, and a Venn diagram is a graphic organizer that we can use to differentiate or to show the similarities and the differences between uh, two objects. Now, again, we said one common thing about fusion and fission is that both of them generate a lot of energy. On fusion, you have smaller nuclei and you fuse or you combine them together to create a bigger nucleus. On fission naman is the opposite. You split a bigger nucleus to form smaller nuclei. Ang example ng yung fusion is in the making of sun's energy, sa fission naman, your example would be your atomic bomb and hydrogen bomb. Okay, so that's fusion and fission. Fusion, fuse, putting, putting together smaller nuclei to create a bigger one. Example, sun's energy. Fission, you have a, a big nucleus and you split them or you split it into smaller nuclei. Example would be atomic bomb, nuclear bomb. All right. Now, going back to our question, which of the following statements is true of nuclear fission? Is it letter A, the process is identical to that which occurs in the sun? Now, the question is nuclear fission. Again, yung fusion po, yun yung pinuput together mo yung mga maliliit na nucleus or nuclei. Okay? Is it nuclear fission, the process identical to that which occurs in the sun? We know that this is wrong because this is nuclear fusion. Energy is, is obtained when nucleus of atoms split. Matter from lighter atoms is changed into energy. Scientists combine lighter atoms to form heavier atoms. This is still fusion. So the correct answer here would be letter B. Okay, letter B is the correct answer. Again, letter B, that's energy is obtained when nucleus of atoms split. Okay, so letter B is the correct answer. Welcome back, welcome back. Yes, ma'am, May Ann, welcome back po. Kakabalik ko lang din po, nawalan din ng internet. Okay, now we go to number 12. The skull of a person increases in size rapidly during what? Is it during puberty, uh, puberty during prenatal, adolescence, or adulthood? Okay, what do you think is the correct answer for number 12? What do you think is the correct answer for number 12? Kailan nag increase ang size ng skull bungo ng isang tao? When does the skull of a person increase in size? Kailan lumalaki ang bungo ng isang tao? Okay, is it during puberty, during prenatal, adolescence, or letter D, adulthood? Uh, Ma'am Cyril or Sir Cyril Kalugas, welcome back po. All right, now, before I give you the correct answer for this, let me just differentiate adolescence and puberty because some, some people are confused with their meanings. When you say adolescence, 
This is the 10 to 12 year period that transform, transforms the dependent child into a functionally independent young adult. So ibig sabihin po, pag sinabi mong adolescence, that is the period which is between childhood and young adulthood. Nasa gitna po siya ng pagiging bata at pagiging young adult. Okay, so that's a 10 to 12 year period that transforms the dependent child into a functionally independent young adult. Pag sinabi mo namang puberty, it is a one to three year process of hormonal and physical change that causes the young person to reach sexual maturity. Yung puberty lamang po ay ang pagkakaroon, yung process kung saan nagkakaroon ng secondary uh, sexual development ang isang bata at kung saan pagkatapos nito ay nagiging sexually mature na ang isang person. So usually uh, when puberty hits, you you have your menarch. Okay, yung, yung menarch po na tinatawag yung first menstruation mo. Nagkakaroon ka ng first menstruation. Or um, sperm mark. Sa, sa lalaki naman tinatawag po itong sperm mark. Or yung first ejaculation. Yung first wet dream mo. So that's puberty. So yan po yung pagkakaiba between adolescence and puberty. So again po, yung adolescence, that's the period in our life between childhood and young adulthood. Okay? So, nasa gitna po siya ng pagiging child, pagiging bata, at pagiging young adult. Now, ang puberty naman po ay ang proseso, lahat ng changes sa ating body that makes us become sexually mature. That's puberty. Now, going back to the question here, the question is, the skull of a person increases in size rapidly during, the correct answer here would be letter B, prenatal. That's correct. So, prenatal po, nasa sinapupunan pa lamang yung body Bata, dyan po lumalaki ang skull or ang bungo ng isang, uh, ng isang tao, okay, ng isang bata. So, correct answer would be letter B, that's 12, for number 12. Okay, now number 13, metabolism and combustion are chemically similar. They result in oxidation of compounds. If completely oxidized, which of the following would yield the highest energy? Okay, when you say oxidation, binibreakdown, binidecompose ng body natin ang isang pagkain. Okay, if completely oxidized, which of the following would deal the highest energy? Is it letter A, the cup of ice cream? Letter B, cup of sugar? Letter C, cup of milk? Letter D, cup of flour? Okay, what do you think is the correct answer for number 13? Uh, number 11, number 11 um, for fission, the correct answer po doon would be letter B. All right, 13. Ano kaya yung tamang sagot? If completely oxidized, which of the following would yield the highest energy? San dito ang magbibigay sa atin ng highest energy? Highest kilocalorie or calories? Kaya usually ay iniiwasan natin. Okay, some of you are answering B, others A, others C. Now, meron ba tayong TLE major dito? Pag TLE major ka, alam mo yung tamang sagot dito. Now, let me go over the different uh, amounts of calories per gram na binibigay sa atin ng iba't ibang klaseng compounds na meron tayo. Pag carbohydrates po siya, ay magbibigay po siya ng 4 calories per gram. Okay, so carbohydrates mo, sugar. Okay, that's a type of carbohydrate. Flour is also carbohydrate. Okay, so it is going to give you 4 calories. Now, if it's protein, protein mo, it's also going to give you 4 calories. Okay, so 4 calories then for your protein. Milk has some sugar and also has some protein. Okay, now, so that's 4 calories. And if it's fat, it's going to give you 9 calories. Okay, so pag fat po, it's 9 calories. Kaya nga, iniiwasan natin yung mga fats. Okay, iniiwasan natin kumain ng masyadong matatabang pagkain. The correct answer here would be letter A, cup of ice cream. That's a lot of fat. And also there seems there, there's also some sugar in it. Okay, but it's very fatty. And uh, kaya nga very creamy siya. Combination na siya ng lahat, lahat talos. Eh. Meron na siyang sugar, meron na siyang milk. Okay, so the correct answer would be letter A, cup of ice cream. Letter A, cup of ice cream. Good morning, Paul, Ma'am KD. 
Welcome back. Welcome back sa inyong lahat. Bumalik na tayo sa ating original na number, no? Bago tayo nawala kanina. Okay, now, before we proceed with numbers 14 and 15, our second questions or our last two questions, I'd like you to please send me your score. Please send me your score. Sabi natin kanina, out of 15, dapat eh, maka at least 9 tayo. At least eh, meron tayong 9 points na tama. Okay, how many points have you ha or do you have so far? How many points do you have out of the 13 questions that we have? Okay, because out of 15, if we are going to get 60% of that, dapat eh, maka 9 points po tayo. Okay, please send me your scores. How many points do you have so far? Ma'am Antonia, very good. 11, 10 for Ma'am Marlene. Ma'am Saina, 11. Ma'am Aida, 5. Okay lang po yan. Uh, again, we are still on the process of uh, practicing. Practice, practice. Practice makes perfect. 9, 10, 11, 5, 9, 5, 11 so far. Okay. Um, 7, 6, 10. 10, 6, 9, okay, 13, good job. Well, 13 out of 13. Congratulations, 5. Bawi sa Prof. Ed, kayang-kaya po yan, okay? So, 9, 8. All right, so at least po maka-9 tayo. If you don't have, if you did not get at least 9, meron pa po tayong dalawang questions na natitira sa ating Gen Ed. And of course, we are still practicing. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, you are going to improve a lot as we go through the process Um on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Sa mga kararating lamang po, our schedule for July would be Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, except tomorrow po. Wala pong klase tomorrow. Okay? All right, now we go to the last two questions that we have. Number 13, which of the following parts of the circulatory system carries digested fats away from the intestines? Is it letter A, pancreatic duct? Letter B, arterial capillaries. Letter C, pulmonary artery. And letter D, lacteals. Okay, what do you think is the correct answer for number 14? Saan dito ang nag-aalis ng fats sa ating mga intestines? Sa ating mga, uh, ano nga yung tawag sa intestines natin? Sa small intestines or sa large intestines mo, anong kumukuha ng fats? Sa bituka. Okay, which one here is getting fats away from your intestines? Is it the pancreatic duct, arterial capillaries, pulmonary artery, or lacteals? Okay, a lot of you are answering A. There's D, A, B. Okay, now before I give you the answer to this, uh, I forgot to write it here. We have three types of blood vessels. Makinig po muna. We have three types of blood vessels. May tatlong uri ng daluyan ng ating dugo no, as part of our circulatory system. There is artery. Ito po, artery. That's the first one. Artery is the first type of blood vessel. The second type of blood vessel would be your vein. Okay, V-E-I-N. Okay, so that's the second type of blood vessel. And the third type would be capillary. So ito pong capillary. Now, common question sa let, may, may tanong sa let now, which among the three types of blood vessels carries blood away from the heart? Which one carries blood away from the heart? Pag away from the heart po, that would be your artery. So tandaan, letter A, away from the heart. Which one carries blood back to the heart? Back to the heart naman, that would be your vein. Okay? And your capillaries, sa capillaries po, dyan kadalasan yung mga processes nangyayari. Capillaries would be like uh, the passageway between an artery and a vein. Para po siyang middle point ng arteries mo and your vein. Okay? Pero kadalasan, dyan yung iba-ibang proseso nangyayari sa capillaries natin. So these are the three types of blood vessels. Arteries, vein, and capillaries. Artery carries blood away from the heart, letter A, away from the heart. The vein carries blood back to the heart. Capillaries form network between the artery and the vein. Now, pag ang tanong naman po ng let, which blood vessel carries blood away from the lungs? Pag sinabi pong lungs, hindi po away from the, the heart, ha? pag sinabi pong lungs, it's going to be the opposite. 
So pag sinabi na pong lungs, away from the lungs, hindi po yung inyong uh, answer would be artery. Sinabi ko kanina, away from the heart, letter A, that's the artery. Back to the heart, that's the vein. Pero pag sinabing away from the lungs, it's going to be the opposite. Ang answer nyo po doon ay magiging pulmonary vein. Vein po siya, baliktad. Pag back to the lungs, your answer would be pulmonary artery. Okay? So artery po siya, baliktad siya. Ang pulmonary, this means the lungs. Okay, pulmon, heart. Ang letter A mo naman, pancreatic duct. So, ito yung mga tubo sa inyong pancreas. Ang arterial capillaries mo naman, ito yung mga capillaries nga. I've already mentioned this. The correct answer for this one would be lacteals. Letter D po. Lacteals po ang tawag sa parte ng circulatory system na kumukuha ng digested fats away from your intestines. Okay, pero tandaan nyo din po yung diniscuss ko. Pag away from the heart, that's the artery. Back to the heart, that's the vein. Pero pag sinabing away from the lungs, that's the pulmonary vein. Back to the lungs, that's the pulmonary artery. Okay, sa so baliktad po sila. Hindi po sila magkaparehas ng heart. But the heart, uh, artery, that's away from the heart. And vein, that's back to the heart. Capillaries, that would be the network between your arteries and your veins. Diyan kadalasan yung mga iba-ibang processes nangyayari. Okay, I hope you got the correct answer for number 14. We proceed to the last one, last question for our Gen Ed today. When water evaporates, it changes into which of the following states? Solid, matter, gas, or liquid? Okay, this is a very simple question in science. This is this can even be found in your elementary. Okay, elementary books. Now, another tip that I can give you when you are preparing for the lab, magbasa po kayo ng mga elementary books. Marami din po silang kinukuwang items sa ating elementary books. So, nakakatulong po kung nagtutor kayo ng inyong mga junakis, ng mga anak nyo. Nakakatulong po kung... Um, um, nagtutor kayo sa mga pamangkin nyo, for example, or sa mga nakababata nyong kapatid. Okay? Marami pong kinukuhang items ang galing sa mga libro sa elementary. Okay, number 15, when water evaporates, it changes into which of the following states? So, anong state of matter? Now, we know that there are three major states of matter. There's solid, there's liquid and there's gas. Okay, so three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Now, pag sinabi mong melting from solid to liquid, if you have an ice and it changes into liquid water, you call this melting. If you have liquid water and this changes into vapor or water vapor, you call this vaporization or boiling or evaporation. Now, from solid to gas naman, hindi dumadaan sa liquid state, you call this sublimation. Ano ba yung mga klase ng mga bagay na uh, pwedeng maging example sa sublimation? Examples for po natin dito would be yung mothballs mo, yung naftalin balls mo, yung mga puting bilog na nilalagay mo sa cabinet para hindi magkaroon ng ng um, ng ipis, no? hindi ka ini ng ipis ang damit mo. Sila po ay nagsasublime. Okay? Nag-a-undergo po sila ng process na tinatawag na sublimation from solid, nagiging gas po sila. So, pag nilagay mo yung mothballs mo, yung naftalin balls mo sa cabinet bilang solid na balls, after a few days, mapapansin mo na wala siya. So, minsan iniisip natin, baka kinain ng ipis. Pero actually po, eh, nag-sublime sublime siya. It underwent a process called sublimation. So, from solid naftalin balls, naging gas siya. Kaya po, amoy na amoy ninyo yung mothballs, di ba? Yung naftalin balls sa inyong cabinet. The sublimation from solid to gas directly without going through the liquids state. Now, going back naman from gas to liquid, you call that condensation. Okay? From gas to liquid, you call the process condensation. Ito po ang proseso kung paano na form ang ating ulan. Okay? This is the process through which rain is formed. That is condensation. So, from water vapor, di po ba, pag, pag nag-evaporate yung tubig na pupunta sa, sa kalawakan, na pupunta sa, sa, sa ating sky, and then maiipon siya as clouds. Okay? So, pag hindi na kaya ng clouds, from water vapor ay mag, magko-condense na ang gaseous water natin. No? Water vapor, it, it'll condense. So, from gas, magiging liquid siya at ibabalik na naman siya sa lupa through the process that we call condensation nga in the form of rain. 
Okay, so that's condensation. Now, from liquid to solid naman, you call this freezing. Liquid to solid is called freezing. Now, the opposite of sublimation, sabi natin kanina, sublimation is solid to gas without going through the liquid state. The opposite for this would be deposition. So deposition po, ang opposite ng gas to solid. Ano naman yung examples ng mga bagay na nagpapakita ng deposition? Ang example po nito ay kung paano tayo gumawa ng mothballs. Okay, so mothballs are formed through the process called deposition. Another thing aside from mothballs that we have ay yung albatros, yung mga nilalagay yung parang bilog din na nasa restroom, nasa CR, no? para hindi mga mo yung CR nyo your albatros, yan din po ay nag-undergo ng uh, sublimation and deposition. So the correct answer here, when water evaporates, dito po siya, it changes into gas. Letter C. Okay, Ma'am Rhea, out na po ako kasi low bat na CP. Akit na lang din po ako ng bukid on Saturday. See ya guys. Okay, kailangan pang mamundok ni Ma'am Rhea. Okay, we salute your dedication and your commitment. So, um, for us, of course, to reach our goals always, kailangan natin magsakripisyo. So, medyo sakripisyo na ng konti, guys. Aahon din tayo. Pag nakapasa na ng let, e pwede na mag-asawa. At aahon din tayo sa buhay. Okay, so number 15, the correct answer is letter C. I hope you have nine points or above for Gen Ed. We'll take a short break and we'll be back uh, at... 8.45. Okay, 8.45 po, babalik tayo.
All right, now some of you did not make it. Other people are saying that they have failed. Wag po kayo mawawala ng pag-asa. Uh, okay lang po yan, sir. Ma'am, don't give up. Practice lang po tayo ng practice. Okay? Sometimes po it happens. And usually, di ba sinasabi nga natin, success is sweeter kung talagang pinagtrabahuan natin, kung talagang uh, ginawa natin lahat ng ating makakaya para tayo makapasa para tayo maging successful. Hindi po lahat ng tao ay nagiging successful on his or her first try. Okay? So, wag pong mag-give up. Don't give up. Let's continue studying. Let's continue doing our best for you to pass the let. Okay? Malayo-layo pa po yung let. Marami pa po tayong time. Again, don't forget our classes this month, in the month of July, would be Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at 7 p.m. except tomorrow. Tomorrow po is a Thursday, pero wala po tayong pasok bukas. Wala po tayong live stream bukas. All right. Now, we continue with Prof. Ed. Make sure that you have written the numbers 1 until 15 for Prof. Ed. And still, the passing score would be 9. 9 out of 15. Okay, so total later, we are going to get your total, which is um, going to be 18 out of 30. All right, we start. Number one, which of the following is usually considered the most important factor in the child's or in a child's observ observable classroom behavior? Is it letter A, intelligence, letter B, heredity, letter C, self-concept, letter D, cultural background? Okay, saan po kaya dito ang pinaka-importanting factor in a child's observable classroom behavior? Palaging nakikita, is it intelligence, heredity, self-concept, cultural background? Okay, what do you think is the correct answer for number one, Prof. Ed? Okay, so there's A, there's D. Some more answers. Okay, now let me go over the different things, the different um, words that we have here. Intelligence, of course, ito ay katalinuhan. Okay, so this is intelligence, katalinuhan ng isang tao. Heredity is whatever it is that you have taken na minana mo sa iyong mga parents. That's heredity. The genes, the traits that you have taken from your parents. Now, cultural background, this is very obvious when you say cultural background. Ano ba yung background mo? Uh, background mo ng inyong kultura. Okay, kung galing ka ba sa... Mayamang pamilya, social cultural na, no? Uh, are you a Filipino? Are you an American? And so on. Ano naman yung self-concept? Okay, when you say self-concept, this is the meaning of self-concept. This is the individual's perceptions of our behavior, abilities, and unique characteristics. A mental picture of who you are as a person. So yung self-concept mo ay kung anong mental picture meron ka bilang ikaw. Ano ba yung picture mo? Ano yung perception mo sa yung behavior, sa yung capacity, sa yung mga characteristics bilang isang tao? That's your self-concept. Idea mo kung ano ikaw bilang isang tao sa yung characteristics, sa yung abilities, sa yung behavior. Okay? And the most important factor here ay hindi po intelligence. Kung ano nakikita natin, uh, sinasabi dito is classroom behavior. It's not intelligence, it's not heredity, it's not cultural background. The correct answer is self-concept. Okay, so self-concept, that is letter C. Okay, letter C po is the correct answer for number one, self-concept. The most important factor in a child observable classroom behavior is your idea about yourself. Ang idea ng isang bata tungkol sa kung sino siya, hindi lamang sa kanyang intelligence, hindi lamang sa kultura niya, kundi ang perception niya kung anong merong behavior siya, kung anong kakayahan meron siya, at kung anong unique characteristics na meron siya as a person. So letter C is the correct answer. Number two, the tendency to imitate elders is very strong in the early childhood stage. Teachers and parents should therefore be very good, A, counselors, B, role models, C, disciplinarians, or D, facilitators of learning. Okay, medyo mahirap ang number one natin, no? Medyo maraming mali sa number number one. Maraming nagkamali sa number one. It's okay. 
Okay, number two, the tendency to imitate elders is very strong in the early childhood stage. Teachers and parents should therefore be very good. Is it letter A, counselors, letter B, role models, letter C, disciplinarians, or letter D, facilitators of learning? Okay, the correct answer that we have here is pretty obvious. Medyo pa ulit ulit na rin ang question na ito. This is very common in the left. And the correct answer is letter B, the role models. Okay, so dapat, we are very conscious of what we're saying. We're very conscious of what we're doing. Sometimes, we might feel, we might think that the child, ang anak natin, yung mga kapatid natin, ay hindi nakikinig sa mga sinasabi natin. And then suddenly, magugulat na lamang tayo dahil kung ano yung mga sinasabi natin, ay sinasabi na din nila. Okay, they're very absorbent. They're very observant. Okay, so be very careful when you are around young kids. So the correct answer is letter B. A lot of us got the correct answer. Number three. Three, education is a lifelong process. This simply means that education, letter A, may take place formally and informally to enable the individual to grow. Letter B, B may take place anywhere and anytime the individual so desires. Letter C is a continuous process of experiencing and learning from these experiences. Letter D takes place in the school where, where the individual is exposed to self-contained experiences. Okay, what's the correct answer for number three? Okay, ano kaya tamang sagot sa number three? Okay, a lot of you have already answered. Let's go back to question number three. Education is a lifelong process. This simply means that education. Okay, so the terms that we have here as hints would be lifelong process. Walang pagod, walang tigil ang ating education. Okay, learning does not end. So the correct answer here is letter C. And your hint is there. It's a continuous process. Continuous, walang tigil. It goes on forever. Okay, from birth to death. Sinasabi nga nila from birth to death. Okay, so number three is letter C. Letter C is the correct answer. Number four, Freud expounded that there is a time when young boys experience rivalry with their father for their mother's affection. This is letter A, Oedipus complex. Letter B, Electra complex. Letter C, Achilles syndrome. Or letter D, Cassandra syndrome. Okay, what do you think is the correct answer for number four? Again, for number four, we're talking about the time when young boys uh, experience rival rivalry with their father for their mother's affection. This is, okay, a lot of you are answering letter A, and that's the correct answer. This is the Oedipus complex. Okay, so nagiging rivals yung anak na lalaki at yung tatay sa affection or sa attention ng, kanila, ng nanay. Okay, so that's the Oedipus complex. Ang electric complex naman, this is the opposite. Yung anak na babae naman, the daughters become rivals of the mothers for the attention of the father. Now, ang Achilles syndrome, Ang Achilles, this is a common question in the left in English gen ed, no? Achilles heel or tendon of Achilles. So, tinatawag ang Achilles heel. Now, we know Achilles sa ating mythology. Si Achilles po yung tao na, uh, ano to? Sinaw, sinaw saw siya, nilubog siya sa ilog, sa isang mahiwagang ilog, if I can remember it co correctly, nilubog siya sa tubig na mahiwaga para maging invincible siya, meaning eh, hindi siya mamamatay kahit na um, anuin siya ng pana, ng bala, whatever, hindi siya tatablan. Pero meron lamang siyang parte kung saan siya pwedeng mamatay and that's in the Achilles heel. Achilles heel po, ng ating Achilles heel ay nasa sakong natin, no? nasa buto, yung parang 
sa heel nga tinatawag nating heel natin ng ating ng, ng, ng ating paa why dahil nung niloblob nga siya sa tubig doon siya hinawakan okay so yung parte lamang yon ng katawan niya ang hindi na iloblob sa tubig kaya yun yung Achilles heel niya Achilles tendon niya now this is very common in gen ed english at yung ibig sabihin po ng Achilles Achilles heel o uh, pag sinabi sa gen ed na she is my Achilles heel what is the meaning of this ang ibig sabihin po ng Achilles heel is weakness. Siya ang aking kahinaan. Okay? She's my weakness. Weakness po ang ibig sabihin niyan. Now, Cassandra syndrome naman, ito ay isang syndrome na sinasabi at then ay galing sa Greek mythology, si Cassandra. No? Pag sinabi mo naman Cassandra syndrome, ito ay pag nagbigay ka ng prediction or nagbigay ka ng, ng, pam, ng something that will happen in the future that is valid pero walang naniwala sa'yo. Okay, that's the Cassandra, Cassandra syndrome. Meron kong pinigay na prediction, pero wala man lang naniwala sa iyo. Okay, so that's the Cassandra syndrome. So again, for this one, the correct answer is like letter A, that's Oedipus complex. Okay, so number four is letter A, Oedipus complex. Now, uh, balikan ko lamang po ang psychosexual theory ni Freud. Meron na po tayong discussion na ito sa, sa ating isang live stream. So again, if you haven't watched all the videos yet, especially our live streams, please go back to all of them. There's a playlist in our channel which... Uh, which is titled Gen Ed and Prof Ed live streams. Nandiyan din po no, ang ating mga discussion. Now, sabi ni Freud, may limang stages sa psychosexual development ng isang tao. And these stages are oral, anal, phallic, latency, and genital. Now, para po malaman ninyo at ma maalala ninyo ng mabilis ito, usually I would give you a mnemonic, I would give you a hint kung paan nyo maalala ito na mas mabilis. And our mnemonic for this is OWLS, always play late games. Again, that's OWLS, always play late games. So oral, anal, phallic, latency, and genital. OWLS, always play late games. Okay, so ito yung sinabi ni Freud na sa psychosexual development ng isang tao, okay, psychosexual development ng isang tao, ay meron siyang five stages na pinagdadaanan sa sa kada stage na ito merong parte ng ng parte sa katawan ng isang tao na nagbibigay sa kanya ng satisfaction or ng gratification so sa oral stage this is during infancy no habang maliit pa yung bata ang ang oral stage sinasabi ng oral stage ang gratification ng bata ay through the mouth so kung kung inyo napapansin lahat ng madadampot ng bata ay nilalagay niya sa kanyang bunganga Okay, so lahat ng kanyang mahawakan nilalagay niya sa bunga. That's the oral stage. Ang anal naman, this is uh, younger years na no, young young childhood. Uh, usually toddler yung yung bata, yung gratification niya or yung kanyang satisfaction ay sa kanyang puwet. Okay? So during this time, tino toilet train na natin yung yung mga anak natin. That's the anal stage. Ang phallic stage naman, phallic came from the word phallus which means the genitals, okay? Yung ari. Okay? That's the phallic. So during the phallic stage naman, yung sexual gratification ng bata eh sa kanyang sa kanyang sex organ. Okay? So, pag nakikita mo yung bata na nagmamasturbate, minsan, hindi naman siya tinatawag na masturbation. Pero pag the child is playing with himself, nihinawa ka niya yung ari niya, usually sa mga lalaking bata, huwag niyong sasabihin na, ay, ginagawa niya yan dahil manyakis siya. Ginagawa niya dahil manangmana siya sa tatay niya, manyakis din. Okay? Huwag niyong pong sabihin yan. Phallic stage happens before the child goes to school. Okay? So, uh, bago siya preschool siya usually, kindergarten, preschool, ganyan. Bago siya talagang mag, mag, magkaroon ng formal schooling, nangyayari po yung phallic stage. And sexual gratification, satisfaction of the child is by playing with his or her sex organs. So, it's just natural for the child to play with his sex organs. So that's part of his exploration. Okay? So, that's the phallic stage. At dito po nangyayari yung tinawag natin kanina ng Oedipus complex and Electra complex. Okay? So, pag Oedipus complex again, yung batang lalaki ay nakikipagkompetensya sa tatay 
para sa attention ng nanay. Ang electro complex naman, yung batang babae, ay nakikipag-competensya sa nanay para sa attention ng kanyang tatay. Okay, so that's the phallic stage. This is prior to school age. Now, ang latency naman, latency is during school age, Okay, so sabi ni Freud, wala masyadong sexual tension dito. Walang sexual tension yung bata during latency dahil nga busy siya sa lahat ng mga ginagawa niya sa school. Okay, that's the last latency stage. And the last stage here would be genital. And this is during adolescence na and um, young adulthood. Okay, so pag sinabi mong genital, this is the second or the sexual reawakening. Tinatawag siyang sexual reawakening. Bakit? Dahil um, naging sexually active na naman yung bata or yung tao. Naging sexually active na naman. The only difference between phallic and genital stage here sa phallic, siya lamang yung naglalaro sa kanyang sarili. Sa genital naman, he is already being... He, he has already become sexually active with the member of the opposite sex or sometimes same sex. So meron nang isang tao, meron na siyang girlfriend or meron na siyang boyfriend. Okay, so that's sexual reawakening. So these are five stages in Freud's psychosexual theory. So sabi ko nga, for you to remember this better, you can only use the mnemonics ALS, always play late games, oral, anal, phallic, latency, and genital. For a more... Uh, deeper discussion for a deeper discussion on this. Make sure that you go back to our to all our live streams, the earlier ones that we had. Meron po tayong mga discussions dito. Okay, now number five. A teacher who subscribes to the pragmatic philosophy philosophy of education believes that experience should follow learning. She therefore exerts efforts in letter A, encouraging learners to memorize factual knowledge. Letter B, equipping learners with the basic abilities and skills. Letter C, requiring learners full mastery of the lesson. Letter D, providing learners opportunities to apply theories and principles. Okay, so again, the question is, if your teacher is a um, believer of pragmatism, okay, he believes in pragmatic philosophy of education, experience should follow learning. So then, what do you think will that teacher do? Okay, what will be... Uh, the steps of that teacher. Encourage learners to memorize factual knowledge, equip learners with the basic abilities and skills, require learners full mastery of the lesson, or let D provide learners opportunities to apply theories and principles. Okay, if you haven't watched our videos yet with the title Isms of Education, please write a reminder in your notebook. Again, we have one video, it's a long one, and it discusses all. It discusses all the isms in education. Lahat na po ng isms na discuss doon, essentialism, progressivism, behaviorism, all of those things. I've discussed everything there. And I've also included a lot of things, a lot of items that would usually come out in the lab. So make sure that you watch that. Write a reminder in your notebook. Write a reminder that you, na you need to watch the isms of education. Okay, nandyan din po siya sa ating playlist na Prof. Ed. All right, so again, going back to our question, your teacher is a pragmatic or is a believer of pragmatism. So which one do you think will she do? Now, going back to your choices here, memorize factual knowledge. This is essentialism. Pwede din siyang cognitivism, development of the brain, okay? Or rationalism, so memorization. Equipping learners with the basic, basic, this is a root word, a general term, general hint for essentialism. Requiring full mastery, essentialist din po ito, which gives us the correct answer, which is providing learner learners opportunities to apply theories and principles. When you say pragmatism, again, Pag sinabi mo pong pragmatism, teach only what is applicable, teach only what is practical. Kung ano yung maa-apply nila in their real life. Kaya yung correct answer natin dito is to apply theories that they have learned in the classroom. So correct answer is letter D for number five. We go to number six. Section 5, Article 14 of the Constitution states that academic freedom shall be enjoyed in Letter A, public assemblies. Letter B, state colleges and universities. Letter C, all levels of learning. Letter D, all institutions of higher learning. Which one do you think is the correct answer for number six?
Okay, this is part of the Constitution, Section 5, Article 14. Alalahanin po natin, please take note that all things in the Constitution pertaining to education is found in Article 14. Okay, so, so nasa Article 14 po ng Constitution, makikita lahat ng provisions for education. So this is part of it. Uh, uh, part of it. So Section 5, Article 14 of the Constitution states that academic freedom shall be enjoyed in blank. Now, if you haven't watched our video yet on the Code of Ethics for Professional Teachers, also part of the Constitution, please also write a reminder in your notebook. Watch the Constitution Code of Ethics video of Kurung Pinoy. Okay, and you know that the correct answer for this one would be all institutions of higher learning. Not all levels of learning, hindi po all levels of learning. Kasi pag sinabi mong all levels, meron ka ng basic education dito, may elementary and high school. Hindi po sila kasali. All institutions of higher learning lamang. Bakit hindi letter B? Dahil letter B, sabi niya state colleges and universities. Paano naman yung private schools? Okay, so higher learning kahit public, uh, private schools ay included din po dito. Hindi naman public assemblies. So the correct answer would be letter D. For number six. So again, number six is letter D. Marami pa sa atin nakakuha ng maling sagot. So make sure that you take note of this. It's not all levels of learning, not just the state colleges, but all institutions of higher learning. So college lamang, hindi lamang state colleges, but also included are your private universities and colleges. All right, number seven, which of these systems of learning includes ways and methods which are used in preserving and building certain traditions within cultural communities? Is it letter A, non-formal learning, letter B, multi-level learning, letter C, cultural learning, or letter D, indigenous learning? What do you think is the correct answer for number seven? So for number seven, we're looking for a system of learning that includes the ways and methods that are used in preserving and building traditions within cultural community. Okay, for example, eh, may grupo ng mga Aita, may grupo ng mga Igrot, may grupo ng mga Mangyan, may grupo ng mga Bajau, for example. What do you call this system of learning? Okay, the correct answer for this one this is not going to be cultural learning, but the correct answer is indigenous learning because we're talking about our indigenous people's communities. Okay, so indigenous learning. Pag uh, sinabi mo naman cultural learning, this is uh, called inculturate, inculturation. If you have watched uh, the previous live streams that we have, pag sinabi mo pong cultural learning, this pertains to inculturation. And inculturation is the learning of one person's culture. How you learn your own culture is called cultural learning. That's part of inculturation. But the correct answer here would be indigenous learning. Okay, so indigenous learning po ang tamang sagot sa number seven. We go to number eight. The child cannot distinguish abstract concepts during the sensory motor stage of development. Which of these techniques should a teacher apply to accommodate learning? So hindi pa magras ng bata ang abstract concepts. For example, eh, pag sinabi mo sa bata yung term na digestion, okay, the child still cannot understand the term digestion. You want to say hi to the people? So which one should you do to accommodate the learning of kids? Is it make use of individualized instruction? So iba-iba yung instruction sa kada bata. Letter B, explain the lesson very well. Letter C, utilize concrete objects to clarify concepts. Or letter D, provide a variety of educational toys. Which one do you think is the correct answer? Come here, you say hi to the students. Hi. No, they can't see you. It's, the camera's over there. Okay. Over here, over here. What's wrong? I'm a baby and 
And now I'm hugging it and this side in the bed and daddy's gone in the work. Do you remember I'm just hugging you and I'm a tiny baby? Yeah, you're a tiny baby. Okay, so Konware, you have this child. Come here, come here. I want to show you to the students. Come here. Okay, Konware, you have this student here. See, baby Ray. This is my daughter for some of you who have not met her yet. Say hi to the students. Hi. hi. So you are trying, if I'm trying to teach her digestion, for example, do you know what digestion is? Mm. Do you understand what digestion is? How your how how the the stomach grinds the food, mm -hmm. how how the food is broken down into smaller pieces. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know what happens to your stomach? Yeah. To the food in your stomach. Okay. So for example, I'm trying to explain to her the abstract concepts. Or example, nga sinabi ko would be um, uh, digestion. Okay. So what will you do since the child? cannot relate with abstract concepts yet is it to make use of individualized instruction explain the lesson very well utilize concrete objects to clarify concepts or provide a variety of educational toys okay the correct answer for this one would be letter c utilize concrete objects to clarify concepts dahil hindi nila maintindihan yung abstract concepts pa pag hindi nila nakikita kaya kailangan nating gumamit ng concrete objects kailangan mong gumamit ng model kailangan mong gumamit ng mock up yung mga models na nakukuha mo yung different parts niya or maybe pwede kang gumamit ng videos okay so utilize concrete objects para maklarify yung mga concepts na hindi nga niya grasp pa kasi wala pa siya sa level na magagrasp niya yung abstract concepts. So the correct answer would be letter C for number 8. Okay, so number 8 is letter C. Now we go back to these uh, different stages of development. This is according to Tupia Shea. Can you remind me of big makeup? Okay, okay. She wants to be like me, sabi. She wants a big makeup daw. Okay, later. You go to Nana na darling, because I'm still busy. Okay, just sleep there. Be quiet, okay? Don't talk. All right, so going back, you have Jean Piaget's cognitive development theory, and you have four steps here, four stages. And these stages are sensory motor, pre-operational, concrete operational, and formal operational. Now, for you to easily remember this, for you to easily remember this one, our mnemonic is smart people cook fish. Again, that's smart smart people cook fish okay so smart people cook fish you had four stages in the cognitive development theory by jean piaget so you have sensory motor you have pre-operational you have concrete operational and you have formal operational now we have one live stream that goes through these different stages in depth meron na po tayong live stream nito go back to that live stream I, if i'm not mistaken uh that's the first live stream that i had okay that so that was back in february so meron kong sensory motor, sabi nga ng sensory motor, kailangan e punong puno ng bagay sa palibot ng bata para ma-develop ang kanyang senses and ang kanyang motor skills. So, this is the reason why you have the mobiles. Yung tinatawag mo mobiles, yung mga nakakabit sa crib ng bata na may mga iba't ibang kulay at merong mga iba't ibang sound. This is to develop the child's sensory motor skills. Ang pre-operational naman, katulad din siya ng sensory motor, wala pa masyadong grasp yung bata sa abstract objects o sa abstract concepts. So, kailangan i-concrete din. Pag, pag nagturo ka sa bata, dapat you will be using concrete objects, concrete materials then That's the pre-operational stage. Hindi pa marunong yung bata ng subtraction. Okay? Hindi pa marunong yung bata ng, ng pag-reverse uh, pag ng mga operations. Okay? That's part of pre-operational. Yung concrete operational naman, alam na nila yung um, process ng subtraction. Alam na nila na kabaliktaran ng addition yung subtraction. Marunong na sila. Nag pumupunta na ito sa uh, nag-aaral na itong mga bata during your concrete operational. And of course, the highest of this would be formal operational. So the child already has the capacity to do logic, reasoning, abstract reasoning. Alam na nila kung papaano. Alright? So these are the four stages in cognitive development according to Jean Piaget. And the mnemonic of, again is smart people cook fish. Smart people cook fish all right 
So the correct answer again for that one is number eight, letter C. Now we go to number nine. The insect orients secondary education to letter A, the teaching of the national symbols, letter B, the development of competencies and values for social living, letter C, health and values development, letter D, national development requirements, and reflects search-based directions. Ano nga ba yung naging goal ng INSEC? INSEC po is National Secondary Education Curriculum. Okay, so this orient secondary education too. Did it teach our national symbols? Uh, was it the development of competencies and values for social living? Is it for the health and values development? Is it letter D, national development requirements and reflects search-based directions? Okay, so tama po kayo. Adya, go lang ng go. Huwag po kayong susuko. Take time and effort. Tama yung sinasabi nyo. Walang madali. Kailangan talaga ay mamuhunan tayo. Okay? So, kailangan talaga ay magtsaga. Pag may tsaga nga, sinasabi nila ay may nilaga. No pain, no gain. Okay? So, um, no guts, no glory. Pag hindi nyo po uh, kakayanin at kung hindi nyo po pagdadaanan lahat ng hirap, ay hindi po kayo magtatagumpay. Okay? So, tama po yan. It's okay even if you fail several times. So, at least, dito lang po kayo nag-fail sa ating practice tests. Okay? Sa ating discussion. But in the actual let, tayo po ay magiging successful na. Okay? So, aral lang ng aral, practice lang ng practice, kayang-kaya niyo po yan. Okay, so sabi ni Sir Jenny Mar dito, letter D, kasi mahaba. Okay, titignan natin kung tama ba yung assumption na kapag mahaba, ito na yung tamang sagot. All right, now we go to the answer for number nine. Uh, but before that, let me go over the, the different things that we have in this slide here. The insect again, or the new secondary new secondary education curriculum, hindi pala siya national, but it's new secondary education curriculum, which is a cognitive, affective, manipulative-based curriculum. Its focus is on substantive and process content, values development, productivity, and technology. So, mas pinaige ang produkto ng secondary school, mas pinaige yung produkto ng uh, high schools, dinevelop din yung values, inintegrate yung technology. Now, there had been eight subject areas in the insect, and these are English, Filipino math, Araling Panlipunan, Science and Technology, Edukasyong Pangkalusugan, Technology and Home Economics, and of course, yung MAPE, Physical Education, Health and Music. But eventually, meron pa pong nadagdag na ninth subject, which was Values Education. Okay, so it started with eight subject areas, and eventually, it came up with the ninth subject, which is values education. Now, going back, the insect orients secondary education too. The correct answer here is letter B, the development of competencies and values for social living. So they tried to develop our competency. And of course, there's the teaching of values. Ito po yung pinaka-importante. So development ng competency and values for social li living para mas maging maige para para mas maging maganda yung produkto ng ng high school natin secondary schools excuse me darling I'm a princess and I came like you and then be okay okay I'll talk to you later okay all right on number ten we go to number ten. How is values education offered in the national or the new secondary education curriculum? Is it letter A, emphasized in science and technology? Letter B, as a separate subject? Letter C, integrated in all subject areas? Letter D, integrated with technology and home economics? Anong tamang sagot sa number 10? How is values education offered in the national secondary education curriculum or the new secondary education curriculum or the INSEC? Was it emphasized in science and technology as a separate subject, integrated in all subject areas, or integrated with technology and home economics? Meron na kayong hint, binigay ko na to kanina. Okay, I've already discussed this a while ago. You go, go to Nana, take off your diapers and put your panties on. Choose your panties. Go take a bath. Rain. Come here, come here, come here. Oh, my commercial break pa. 
Rainy, can I please get her? Come here now. Go take a bath. Wear your panties. You already told me you're a big girl. I'll say bye now to the students and go take a bath. I'll play with you in a little while. Rain. Nako, ang kulit ng estudyante ko dito sa, sa room. Let's go downstairs. Come here. Play? Go ahead, you'll play. Go na, go. Let's go and play. See you later. Come here. Uh, don't take a bath. Just change your diapers into panties. <laughs> See you. Ah, uh, in a little while. I'll see you. Basta hindi magsabad, pamuyong lang, okay? Don't disturb the students. Okay, now the correct answer for number 10 is, I've already given you a hint on this, letter B, as a separate subject, okay? So this is where the teaching of values education as a separate subject started, okay? So number 10 is letter B. All right, now number 11, in large classes where little of the work can be individualized, the most effective and practical way to individualize instruction is to, is it letter A, device group activities which afford every pupil, an opportunity to work on his own? Letter B, give the students freedom to launch individual projects. Letter C, assign homework and check it regularly. Letter D, assign program materials for out of class hours. Okay, for number 11 here, you have a very large class, okay? For example, your, your class has 60 students, okay? So there is very little chance for you to individualize instruction. Hindi ka nakakapagturo masyado na individualize yung instruction. So what will be the most effective and practical way for you to individualize your instruction? Is it letter A, device group activities? So magkakaroon sila ng group activities where each pupil has an opportunity to work on his own. Letter B, give the students freedom to launch individual projects. Letter C, assign homework and check it regularly. Letter D, assign program materials for out of class hours. What do you think is the correct answer for number 11? Good girl, my good girl. Let's wait for mommy. Okay, lie down now, lie down. Colitis, colitis. Okay, so sinasabi nga natin dito sa number 11 natin, napakalaki ng klase mo. So anong gagawin mo para magkaroon ka din ng individualized instruction? A lot of you are answering letter A and that is the correct answer. Device group activities which afford every pupil an opportunity to work on its own. Hindi ka po pwedeng mag magkaroon ng individual projects yung kada isudyante mo. Hindi din po pwedeng bigay ka ng bigay ng homework dahil hindi mo rin siya machi-check regularly dahil malaki nga yung klase mo. You also cannot have out-of-class hours, okay? So usually, yung nangyayari ay meron kang group activity and you'll have, each pupil will have a chance to work on his own. Okay, so number 11 is letter A. Now we go to number 12. Bless you. Which of the following is the best time for a teacher to set up routine activities that will contribute to effective classroom management? Okay, is it letter A, as soon as the students have settled? Letter B, daily at the start of the session? Letter C, during his homeroom days? Letter D, on the very first day of school? When are you going to set up your routine activities? Routine activities, these are things like how to pass the papers forward, how to collect papers, how to check your attendance, how to get the devices, for example, how to go to the restroom. Okay, so how... How do you set up your routine activities? What would be the best method for you to do? Okay, is it letter A, as soon as the students have settled daily at the start of the session, during his homework, homeroom days, or letter D, on the very first day of school? 
All right. Now, a lot of you are answering letter D, and that is the correct answer, okay? On the very first day of school, you should set up your routine activities. You should introduce your routine activities to your students. Now, for your routine activities to be effective, you should be consistent with them. So, pa palagi dapat kung ano yung routine activity mo, kung ano yung sinabi mo sa kanila na dapat gawin whenever they go to the restroom, for example, dapat maging consistent ka sa kanila. Dapat every day, kung anong nangyayari sa classroom mo, ganun yung ginagawa mo. That's your routine activities. Para ma-imbibe ma siya ng students, para maging second nature na sa students, para maging natural na sa iyong mga estudyante. Alright, so number 12 is on the very first day of school. That's correct. Now, number 13, an appreciation lesson is one that is designed to lead the class to conduct and enjoy something. Which of the following statements closely approximate the meaning of the above? Letter A, an appreciation lesson should be a lesson in values. Letter B, appreciation lessons help people weigh and clarify values. Letter C, one cannot fully appreciate what one does not understand or enjoy. Letter D, a teacher should plan lessons that will guide children to appreciate what is beautiful. Okay. Now, for number 13 here, you are trying to introduce appreciation lesson to your student. Okay, so you are going to have a lesson and the students are going to enjoy it. Now, bakit? Bakit natin ginagawa yung appreciation lesson? Bakit uh, parte ng ating objectives, for example, meron kang cognitive objective, meron kang psychomotor objective, yung mga skills mo, at meron ka ding appreciation. Ito yung mga effective na, effective na, na objective mo. Bakit? Welcome to our live stream, Ma'am Faith Manao. Okay, so kahit ulit-ulitin nyo lamang po yung mga videos natin, that is going to be very helpful for all of you. But of course, I would suggest that you also, if you can, always attend our live stream. Dahil yung live stream nga po natin, dito natin iniisa-isa yung discussion, dito natin... Um, dinidecipher yung ating mga questions. Kasi po mahirap sa let pag hindi nyo naintindihan yung, yung tanong. Dapat lamang po ay intindihin maigi yung tanong para uh, we can come up with the correct answer. Now, a lot of you have uh, chosen choice D. Ano ba sabi ng choice D? A teacher should learn lessons that will guide children to appreciate what is beautiful. So pag ugly, hindi na ma-appreciate dapat ng teacher. Okay? So hindi siya Catriona Gray. Okay, not not looking at the silver linings of clouds. Okay, so titingnan lamang kung ano yung maganda. The correct answer for number 13 is bakit natin binibigyan, nilalagyan ng appreciation lesson? The correct answer for this one is letter C. One cannot fully appreciate what one does not understand or enjoy. Hindi mo mabibigyang halaga ang isang bagay kung hindi mo ito naintindihan at hindi mo ito na-enjoy. Kunwari, one classic example for this would be in teaching math. Marami sa atin ayaw na ayaw sa math, ayaw na ayaw sa numbers dahil we did not learn to appreciate it. Hindi natin siya na-enjoy dahil nung bata pa lang tayo, takot na tayo sa math. Especially po pag naging math teachers nyo ng elementary kayo, kayo ay hindi masyadong magaling, no? hindi kayo pina-appreciate sa math, hindi binigyang halaga yung math. Okay? Uh, puro lamang calculations, puro lamang drills. So one cannot fully appreciate what one does not understand or enjoy. Okay, so that's letter C. Now, before we go to our last two questions, I'd like you to please send me your score so far. Please add up your score from Gen Ed and Prof Ed until now. So again, sabi nga natin, out of 30, the passing score is 18 points. Okay, so you should have 18 points out of 30. Okay, so before we go to the last two questions, we, we only have the uh, last two questions left. Okay, we're almost done, darling. Okay, please send me your score so far. How many correct answers have you had so far out of, we've already have 28 items. So again, for you to pass, you should have at least 18 out of 30. We still have the last two items. Okay, so we have 19, 20. Some of you did not uh, watch the gen ed part maybe. Okay, okay lang po yan. If you did not make it, it's okay. So practice makes perfect nga. Ika natin, no? Sabi natin, practice makes perfect. 
you want now? How was your dream in the bed? My dream? Yeah. My dream was good. Uh, my dream is good. Okay, your dream is good too. Good for you. Okay, so there's 17, 10, 22. Good job. Good job. Pag hindi pa po reach yung 18, it's okay. Uh, we are going to have Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays live stream. Okay, so go lang po ng go. Wag mawawala ng pag-asa. All right, we go to question number 14. Okay, number 14, second to the last. Which of the following abilities is stressed by humanistic education? Which one is stressed by humanistic education? What's your favorite color? You know what my favorite color is. Okay, is it A, learn the different philosophies of education. Letter B, develop man into a thinking individual. Letter C, place a premium on individual potential. Or letter D, make man distinctly civilized, educated, and refined. Mm -hmm. And my favorite color is purple. Okay, good for you. Can I have purple balloon? Mm -hmm. Later. Langka, please be quiet and I for a while. We're almost done. Okay, last two questions. Okay, so which of the following abilities is stressed by humanistic education? Pag yung focus ng education mo ay humanistic, is it to learn the different philosophies, to develop man into a thinking individual, letter C, place a premium on individual potential, or letter D, make, man's, make man distinctly civilized, educated, and refined? Which one do you think is the correct answer? Okay, many of you are answering letter D, make man distinctly civilized, educated, and refined. Uh, letter D is actually part of Roman education no? to make men distinctly civilized, educated, and refined. The correct answer for this one, letter B, more developing men into a thinking individual. This is rationalism, cognitivism, pupwedesha. The correct answer for this is letter C, place a premium on individual potential, reaching the full potential of a person. That is humanistic education. Okay, reaching a person's full potential. That's letter D. Uh, letter C, sorry. Okay, so letter C is the correct answer for number 14. Reaching an individual's full potential. All right, now we go to the last one, last question. Which of these philosophies is related to that of Dewey's, which stress or stresses the development of an individual capable of reflective thinking, specifically of being able to solve the problem one faces individually. What's the correct answer for number 15? Disciplinarianism, developmentalism, experimentation, or rationalism? Okay, which of these philosophies is related to that of Dewey? Dewey's uh, philosophy, of course, is progressivism. So which one is related to this? And it stresses the development of an individual capable of reflective thinking. Meron kayo mga nakikita ang buhok sa screen? Alam niyo na po kung sino ang aswang yan. Go ahead and open it. Go to Nanay. I'll be there in a while. Next time, don't close it. See you later. Don't close it. Okay, a lot of you are answering number 15 already, and your answer is experimentation. Now, we all know that the father of progressivism is John Dewey, but uh, aside from progressivism, Dewey has also given us experimentation. So that would be the correct answer, okay? So 15 is letter C, that is experimentation, which is another philosophy given to us by John Dewey, okay? So 15 is still experimentation, another philosophy given to us by John Dewey. Okay, now make sure that uh, uh, you check your scores regularly. So yung importante lamang po ay nag-improve uh, nag ang ating score, no? So eventually, um, we will also reach... Um, we, we will also be able to reach the passing score, which is, of course, 60% of 30. 30 or 60% of 30 would be 
18. Okay, so Mam Corazon Manalang, Gen at 9, Prof at 8, so then 17, that's okay. Again, we are still in the process of always trying to practice. Okay, so do not lose hope, don't give up, just practice, practice makes perfect. And no one started, always remember that no one starts from the top. We always start from the bottom and we work our way until we reach the top, okay? So don't give up. Now for those people who'd like to be part of our Grow Nga, Gurung Pinoy Review Online Work Group, make sure that you send us your 250 as a contribution so that you can easily download easily print all the materials that we have. We are going to make those materials available as soon as we can. For those people who are asking for uh, Gcash, give us uh, 24 hours, okay? We, we are going to go back, uh, go, get back to you and uh, explain how you can send us your payment through Gcash and we are going to set it up. If you have already paid, then make sure that you send us your receipt Okay, and so that we can we can add you to grow, okay, to our exclusive FB group, and you can easily download or print all the important uh, materials that we have there. Okay, so you want to say bye to them. Bye. Okay. Say, tell them to study hard and tell them God bless you and they love you. Study hard. Study hard. What else? I love you. Okay, I love you. All right, so again, for those people who are asking for ab about the Gcash, how you can send them, just give us 24 hours, then we might just make an announcement in our official Facebook page, okay? So, antabayanan nyo lamang po yan. Samuli, don't give up. Stay COVID-free, stay safe. Uh, always pray hard and study hard. We are always just going to be here to guide you all the way until you take and you pass the let and you top the lab, okay? So sa muli, ito po ang inyong gurong Pinoy na nagsasabing maliit man na butil na mga kaalaman, ang dulo nito ay malaking kaginawaan. Maraming salamat po. Good night and good evening back there home, back, back home in the Philippines and good morning here from South Carolina, USA. I'll see you in our next live stream and that's going to be on Saturday. God bless you. Bye!